you know, uh, hand bone with a second and Hatfield with a win on that, okay? Okay. I don't know who Hatfield rides for, so I'd like to give his uh, sponsor props, but uh, at this time I can't do it, okay? But like I said, we picked up Chris Hamm lately. He's now riding on Sunbrew All-Star, so we're pretty excited about that, man. He says he's dedicated to the sport again. He's going to train. He's going to travel with the team. The good news about the team now is we have a lot of older guys that can all hang out and they all grew up riding together, a bunch of mm -hmm. Texas guys, okay? So there's a rundown of your experts, okay? Now let's talk about the uh, elite programs. And let's talk about A-Pro. We'll start with the A-Pro. A-Pro yesterday, man. Once again, A-Pro, Jimmy, is stacked with a lot of talent. But we had Jacob Peebles show up in the house today from California. Also, the guy that's been flying and killing it, K.J. Romero, this guy is uh, riding for Anarchy, and I believe he's uh, he won the last time I was at a race in Guthrie. I believe he won both days. He uh, got some wins maybe in Reno, in the second day in Reno, so he'll be moving up to Double A pretty soon. But uh, let's see who came out on top. Mike Caldwell came out on top. So we went Mike Caldwell for A Pro, Jacob Peebles, and then KJ Romero for the third. So, like I said, another exciting class to watch. You don't want to miss that one. That's when everyone kind of gathers to the stands to watch all the pros. You'll definitely know when they're on the uh, gate. Let's talk about the elite women. Now, this is interesting. I have a girl. I don't know. Uh, I've never seen her before. She's from France. Uh, last name is Valentino. I believe her uh, first name may be uh, Manon. We also had Dominique Daniels in the house and Elise Post, okay? Dominique Daniels has got the power. It's always exciting race to watch her. you got Elise Post with all the skills. Now, I don't know much about the uh, young lady from France, okay? But she took the win. <laughs> so that's okay. what I do know. She was out front, stayed out front. Uh, Elise Post is making moves. So there's a, uh, a nice little, there's a couple jumps on the second straight. And, and this girl jumped with the best of them. So uh, she had a, an opportunity to pass uh, Dominique Daniels. It didn't happen for her. Uh, like I said, 3D got the uh, second, and Elise Post got the third. Now, if you remember, Elise Post, we're wanting to talk to her because she rides for Team Redline and happens to be dating Sam Willoughby. So hopefully we'll get to talk to her after she races, okay? Yeah. All right. I want to mention one more group. We'll get, that, we'll get that next. Let's go to the elite men. The elite men. This is the top tier there, Jimmy. These guys are all hoping to go and get those medals. In the house, though, we've got a lot of guys. We've also got Mayor Stromberg. If you remember, he's the guy that got the actual gold there. Uh, let's see. We had Sam Willoughby, Mark Willers, Bubba Harris, who's been riding hot all weekend, man. The guy's on fire. Uh, and several more guys out there. Local guy Jason Rogers, Donnie Robinson in the house. So let's see how they came out. Will he win this? Our man Sam Willoughby, the guy we interviewed the other day, is, uh, took the win. Mark Willers with a third. A second, I'm sorry. Second. And Bubba Harris with a third. So anything can happen today, man. I've seen some guys mixing it up already. Um, you know, it's going to be an exciting day for racing for the elite men. All these guys are hoping to get a shot at the Olympic, you know, the Olympic title. A couple of uh, medal winners in contention still. And we'll get to those guys here shortly uh, and see where they're at in the semis. All right. I want to bring up something there, Jimmy. The sport of BMX, you never have to stop doing it, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of guys are passionate about it, and they've been doing this for many, many years. But I noticed yesterday I was watching the races. Eric Group, they call him the Big Daddy. Man, this guy was killing it when I was a kid in the 80s. Oh, he was really? a big time factory rider, star, you know, doing his thing. I seen him on Schwinn. If you watch a show called Joe Kid on the Stingray, he's there's some footage of him on there, I believe, when he wrote for Schwinn. Um, and this guy is a pioneer. He's an icon in the sport. Still doing what he loves, man. I don't know how old he is, but he's in the 46 to 50 year old cruiser class, okay? So he's somewhere over the age of 46, maybe 50, who knows? Um, dude's riding for Factory GT. But Eric Group, 46 to 50. I don't think he's ever stopped, man. Can you imagine that, man? Your whole entire life, you ride a bike, you get to do what you love, you get to travel a lot, you know, doing this thing. So it's amazing, man. Yeah, and you can't ask for anything better than that. And uh, that's the exciting thing about this, man. Of course, a guy like Eric Rupp, you're 40 years old, you might have a 10 year old child that wants to race. Okay, so you get the family involved. Uh, you know, it's a good way to talk to the wife and to let you still do the sport, and uh, you know, blame it on the kid that wants to race. And daddy's out there; he might as well not just be a mechanic, but actually be a rider. Okay. Yeah. And these guys are super competitive. One of the funnest classes to watch, I think, in the sport is the 41 to 45 cruiser. Super competitive, always going at it. Anybody's race. There's about five guys that are always in contention. <laughs> what's, what's when I do that, Jimmy, I want you to start talking. It means I got a cough. Oh. I was trying not to I thought you were wanting me to pull down your microphone. Did you know what I was trying to pull off when I was pointing at him? That guy right there knew what was going on. <laughs> uh, he's got a hard arm. That happened today? That's all right, man. Oh, man. You don't have a cast on it. That means you'll be back tomorrow, right? I, I, brother, I'd love to hear what you're saying, but I got earphones on. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, like I said, man, the sport is competitive, man, especially at a race like this. Uh, in the turns, it gets pretty dicey. 
Uh, guys make their moves there. They go up, they go down, they do the high-low. And uh, sometimes it doesn't always pay off for them, okay, Jimmy? So <laughs> make sure you watch the turns and the mains, okay? Now, we're sitting at a spot, guys. If you're watching, you can see the track in the background, so you'll see a little bit of action. I'll try to turn around and see who's on the gate when some of the older classes come around. And, um, you know, maybe we, after they're done, we'll get some interviews before the mains as well. Yeah, we actually have a really great spot because uh, we're right here by the finish line. Oh, we can so see the can, finish line. Yeah, well, you can check that out. I'll get someone to help us out that can hear what's going on. And maybe when uh, some of the uh, classes that we're trying to keep an eye on, maybe they'll give us a clue. So we need to get a helper over here. We can get maybe Gary Elmore in the house to help us out. But you know what? Let's talk about something else about the sport. We're talking about guys that are racing into their 40s. Man, I attended something last night that was really special to me, man. I grew up racing BMX right here in Texas at a place called Dallas County Soccer Park, okay? Uh -huh. The other day, man, I get an invite from a, uh, the track operator, my old team manager, Dean Hickey, okay? And I got to be honest with you, I didn't really know what to expect. I thought maybe a few guys are going to show up, we're going to sit around a room, and they're going to give out some, uh, some dinky awards. Not the case, my buddy, my friend. Yeah. I go there, man, and I learned so much about the sport and the history, which I think is the best and the most positive thing about these Hall of Things, okay? They have one at Chula Vista that's really neat as well. It's more of a national thing. But, uh, man, I got these some guys I didn't even know were from Texas. I remember seeing them in the magazines before I had my first Silver Street Diamond back, okay, when I was just dreaming about racing. And I had no clue they actually raced the same track that I grew up racing on, okay? Oh, wow. So, and, uh, man, what a great turnout, though, man. The, the place was packed, lots of riders in there. They had lots of booze to be served, which I had a nice little bonus for several people. But, uh, <laughs> the only thing I missed out is I missed the first 15 minutes because the races were so big yesterday here. They ran a lot longer than expected, okay? Uh -huh. But I'm going to try to get my old track operator. Now, he's actually on the board of directors, okay, with the uh, Texas Hall of Fame. But his name is Dean Hickey. I saw him walking by. Let me try to grab him and get him over here and get him on a mic, man. And uh, let's talk to him about what's going on, what he felt about last night. I should mention, man, my mug, if you can see that mug right there, there's a logo. It's an actual, I bought, I paid, can you believe I paid for something? I'm used to getting everything given to me when I show up. I didn't, you know, such a special event, and the proceeds go to help out. I ran out there and gladly gave my money, bought me a poster. Yeah, but uh, let's talk to Dean Hickey about uh, last night. Dean, can you hear me very well on those earphones? Yeah, I'm on. Hey, guys, how's it going? How you doing, man? Oh, man, great. Just living the dream, man. This is uh, awesome. Like I say, uh, I enjoy coming back here to Texas to Metroplex BMX. Uh, this was our roots, and uh, living up in Minnesota now, I get I get a lot of local racing up there, but nothing like what we used to do down here in Texas back in back in the day with you, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, let me. How special was last night to you, bro? Oh, I tell you what, that was. Uh, I've been through a lot of things with BMX over for the last 30 plus years, but uh, that that one that one really started to pull the tears out. You know, those guys were the pioneers of our sport. Those are the guys that uh, built the sport. Uh, us as track operators were guided by those guys. We just gave them the place to race. And uh, for the accomplishments that they've done over the years, uh, being our introductory class, I mean, it's just it was just amazing. Yeah, I'm, I mean, got to tell you, I was really, really impressed, man. You guys, it was y'all's first time. I thought there might be a lot of stumbling going on. The only issue I had was the first guy. Now, I, he's before my time, and I was excited to get to know his story, and that's what I think is so great about the Hall of Fame. Uh, he had a great, great story. But what was the first guy? What was his name? Uh, was that Albert Delgado? Oh, you know what? I got there late. So okay. that's, but you nailed the guy in front of the Albert. Yeah, Albert Delgado. First uh, of all. Out of Amarillo. I got it. When y'all were talking about how great he was and the things he did and he accomplished, it was super, super impressive because that's in the early, early stages of the sport, okay? Oh, yeah. That's 1973-74, back when we just got going. Well, we got a lot of read. All right. Now, what I was most shocked about with that guy, I got to say, was... When I looked up, hey, by the way, my earphones are really loud all of a sudden, like super loud. Uh, what I've got to tell you was the most impressive thing about that guy was when he stood up, I still didn't see him. <laughs> Albert Delgado was, was the munchkin of the, of the industry back then. Uh, he's, he's not much bigger than he ever was when he was racing as a, as a teenager. But, uh, you know, that, that might have been one of his uh, ploys back then. He was, he was a, a sniper, you know. If he wasn't out in the lead, he'd come and, you know, back then, tracks weren't like what we have behind us right now, you know. We built tracks forever, uh, and I tell you what, what they raced on back then was, you know, carved out of grass, grassy knolls, you know, and it was just amazing what he could do on, a, on, on not having a berm to work with. I was trying to ask Keith McWilliams here, another old timer that raced your track, man, if he could hear us down there or not. That's what I'm trying to ask you, Keith. I must be the worst guy in sign language in the world because you didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm going, pointing to my ears, going, 
can you hear us? And this guy has no clue what I'm saying, so I need to work on my sign language skills. Can you hear us down there, Keith? He can hear us. Okay. Another old timer right there. Well, maybe uh, one day we'll get him on there. One of my team riders, uh, Factory Sunbrew. It's kind of cool to see the old group together, isn't it? Oh, it's just team. amazing. I say, uh, when I come back into town, you know, uh, I, I get to see guys like Keith all the time. But uh, we, we pulled guys out of the woodwork from the old Dallas County Cycle Park days uh, back in 1981, 82 that, you know, I haven't seen since then. You know, and it was just absolutely amazing. Crazy chaos out here. For all the old school guys, and I, I, and I hate to call us old school, but yeah, that's what we. It are. is what it is. No big deal. No shame in that. Hey, listen, I, we got to go back to Albert for a minute because I was trying to see if they could hear us or not. Man, I, I was. You talking about how little he was? How tall do you think he was? Uh, probably he. He's no more than five four. Is that? Yeah, and in his racing day, he might have been uh, four nine. You know, and, oh, wow. and like I say, he was he was a snake in the grass. He would, he, you know, they didn't know he was coming, and. But there was a lot of times he was out in the lead. Yeah. Uh, let the Keith take the poster. Hold on. Before you touch that, Keith, this is what is also really impressive. If you can see the camera here, these guys had their poster, their signing autographs, and I thought that was a special touch right there that really made this event really cool. Because I got my poster, all of these guys in one team, and it'll definitely, because they're from Texas, it's going to go on my wall. I'll probably frame it first. It'll definitely be in case. I'll it So put this about it anywhere. But this is the coolest thing about it, man. Yeah, this, this is my my personal copy. So uh, uh, you know, before, you know, going in the room back up in Minnesota. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't mess it up there. But um, well, you know, talking about Albert again. Get off the subject. I thought Don Robinson is gonna be the greatest, shortest rider in history of BMX, and Don is awesome. But he's not. He's taller. Don looks like a basketball compared to Albert. Yeah, Albert, Albert. Albert was a munchkin. But I tell you what, uh, he was. Uh, he was dynamite in a small package. I mean, he was he was Mr. Power. You know, he was he he had he had the leg strength, and he had the moves. You know, back then the moves are completely different than what they do today. I mean, you got to remember these guys were on platform pedals back then, on on 25 to 30 pound bikes, and um, it was just nothing but just you know finding the line and making it work, and that's what they did. Yeah. It now, Jimmy, you're an outsider. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong for being impressed and thinking this guy's just an awesome because of his height? Is that wrong of me? You always no, I don't think right? so. I just, I just think when I saw that, I was like, man, dude, this guy did such great things at such a high level being that high. So, like I said, I hope it's not wrong of you, but I, that's probably the, the awe factor for me last night. Let's talk about the other guys real fast, and we'll have to kind of wrap this up. Also, a few guys. We had D. Chips. Didn't know he was from Texas. Yep, D. Chips was uh, one of our own local riders. You know, D. Chips actually out of Fort Worth, uh, you know, started racing track in 1981. And, uh, you know, we actually, just out of the Dallas Fort area, three of our riders came from this area that are not our introductory class. Uh, you know, we got Don Jolie, uh, D. Chips, and Jeff Osmus, you know, were inducted into the Hall of Fame. And these three guys under the ground out at Dallas County Cycle Park and at Cowtown BMX, hidden trails, uh, day in and day out. Every time we race, they were there. I know we're going to kind of short because there's some races that I want to check out, but we'll, let's mention all the guys real fast. Once again, we had Don Jolie, who's right for Factory Roll at Raleigh, on his own box shop. Robert rode for what team? Uh, he, 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 he was a Rebel racer. Okay, Rebel. Jeff rode for Pro Neck. Pro Neck Jeff rode, 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 rode for Tor Torker and Pro Neck. He was Tor a big Torker guy. Steve Haynes, looks Steve, like Factory Rebel. Steve Haynes was Factory Rebel. D Chips? D Chips. Uh, D Chips was uh, uh, was actually an SE guy. He was a, a big factory oh, SE right. guy. Cool. And then want to make a special note of somebody real fast. I want to cut it short in the Hall of Fame. I hate to do that to you, Dean. Not a problem. Uh, but Kevin Hull. Kevin Sheepdog Hall. Uh, what a what a story with this young man. I mean, uh, grew up in the Austin area and just turned into uh, Mr. Magic. Rode for Factory GT, and he put. Him and Don Jolie put Texas on the map. You know, back to Don Jolie. Don Jolie was our first ever factory salaried rider. Keep going. Oh. You know, he was just an amazing guy. Uh, Don, Don Jolie is the reason that this Metroplex BMX building is up. When I met Don Jolie in 1981, he introduced me to the sport. My dad and I took that to three different tracks, and because of that, we have DeSoto Metroplex BMX because of Don Jolie and his dad, Wes Jolie. All right, I'm going to try to get out there. Let uh, me make it help because I want to make sure we, the expert mains when they come around, we come out. 
So uh, if we can try to find a partner that's right here listening, we'll turn around and uh, give you some highlights of what's going on. I think we're on the intermediate section right now. These guys look like probably intermediates or no novice. Hey, there we go. Adam, are we on intermediate? Will you cue us when the experts are up? Are they, okay, give us a cue. Uh, Dean, one more thing I want to say about Kevin Hull. My highlight from him last night was that I remember him racing. The sheet had long, blonde, curly hair. Long, blonde locks. He walks over. I introduced myself. Said, "Hey, I'm the guy that called you about this." They're okay. They're up. He gave me his uh, autographed copy. He was in the show Rad. He autographed it for me. I thought that was he didn't have to do that. He was like, "Come here, I got something for you." And get it made my night, man. Let's let's turn around. I'm gonna keep an eye. Jimmy, you can just keep facing forward because you don't know truly. Really looking. Oh, these are little guys. These are the experts. Uh, we lost. One. Now we lost the guy. Oh, in the lead though. So that could be a could be a thing. Hold on. See here. I can't. I can't hear you, brother. I, I gotta keep working. Um, what do we got? Five experts? Six experts? All right. I wish I could hear. I, actually, I'll take my earphones and I will be here. But I want to see what's going on. Obviously, Jimmy, you got a lead rider that goes down. I got in the top three. That could affect mag standings, uh, team sheets. There's a lot to this, okay? So let's see uh, who's up next. You know, we'll, we'll turn around about the 12 expert class. I'm pretty familiar with all those guys. I've seen so many names I don't recognize that are new. Uh, you know, I looked at this for about a year. Had to take a little uh, hiatus. Uh, my team kept going, but there's a lot of names that are, are stepping up that I'm not familiar with. Now, Jimmy, one thing I want to mention that's really uh, exciting about today is the amount of factory teams there are this year. There's just a, a ton of factory teams, okay, that stepped up. The teams are so well, you know, balanced. There's not really a powerhouse in the sport, okay? Any team can take it. And let me tell you, this weekend, just to name a few of the teams that showed up, I see Intense made it. They're hitting the East Coast now. We had Kruppi, which is our 2011 team champions for the uh, USA BMX. We had uh, Sunbury, of course, is in the house. It's our home track. Answer Rennan. We've got Redman. I see a lot of the S-squared riders also uh, that are here, like uh, Malik ben Loss. I see Hojo Howard Johnson and a few other guys. So tons and tons of factor teams. We're not even to mention all the bike shop and trophy teams here. So you have, and I'm probably leaving a few people out, but you've got uh, like eight top factor teams right here in town for Texas, man. That's going big, man. Now, Dean, you've been away from the sport. It was all about California. With the merger of the NBL and the ABA, the races are getting bigger. That means the points are here now. Oh, it's going to be uh, amazing. Uh, you know, this is something ever since I've been, I actually worked with the ABA for several years uh, out, in, out in the office out in uh, Phoenix. And uh, this is something we had talked about for years, if we could ever get that merger to happen. And, and you know, credit to B.A. Anderson and his staff at, the, at formerly the ABA. You know, they made this thing happen. And it's, it's going to go crazy. Well, what's really exciting is that Tennessee last month had over 300 motos. That's like a Cali National. That means you can be right here in the middle of the USA. You can be at the East. And you can go for those nag standings, those amateurs, you know, the titles now. There's no more excuses. With this merger, we've got factory teams sending guys to Florida now. Didn't used to happen. They used to just pass up those races. Prime example, this race for the last several years has been that, been that 190, two, uh, 200 moto count. You know, we cranked out 250 motos yesterday. Yeah. So that just shows you the growth. That's the biggest uh, race in DeSoto that I can remember. It's usually about 180, 190. Uh, the races went to 7.30. Y'all probably weren't expecting that, so that's why the Texas Hall of Fame started at 7.30. But maybe next year you guys might want to be uh, more like 8 o'clock or 8.30. Yeah, actually, we, uh, we're all we're, we're pumped. We're actually going to be conducting our 80s class at the end of August uh, down at Fairland BMX uh, for uh, our 80s nomination. So that's oh. going to happen at the state championship final at Pearland, Texas. That's what y'all doing. Y'all doing it by like, 70s and 80s. Okay. That's pretty exciting. I know some guys in that one. I can already can get. Yeah, the the decade thing is uh, how we're doing it. Hey, that that's uh, that's our. Error. I mean, uh, Brandon. Hey, you're an 80 rider. Hey, someday you might be in the Hall of Fame. Not for racing, I won't be. <laughs> hey, we, we're we're bringing in industry stuff too. So. All right, right. I'm for uh, my contribution of tanning lotion to the uh, oh. world of being. But my biggest <laughs> contribution is pit chicks. I'm pretty sure that Sunbrew has got that on lockdown. Oh, you got that. Don't tell. That's lockdown city there, baby. Can I get in the Hall of Fame for being one of the guys that brought the uh, pit girls around? Uh, I don't I don't see no doubt. All right. And also, I did turtle racing at Grand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those, those were the days. Break dancing. Hey, we, we've added some flavor. You mentioned uh, Kevin Hull. Let's go back to him real quick. Uh, okay. And his, his connections with Rad. You know, uh, two years ago when you brought me into town for uh, – 
your uh, your own '80s icon award. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I should I, mention I, that. Uh, Sunbrew give out. A, we, we're going to do that annually, by the way. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, not, yeah, not back, to cut you, you off. Know, the Texas Icon Award that you brought me in for two years ago was just you know mind blowing for me. You know, I, I I still live that every day. You know, that award is on my wall, my trophy room. Everybody that walks in, you know, into my house sees that. You know, and I have to pump it up. But uh, Kevin Hall tied with Rad. When you brought me in, you know, we had. Uh, Bill Allen in to, which, to present that. Which for people that don't know who Bill Allen, because people don't know Bill Allen, Crew like Jones. we do, Crew Jones flew in to give out that award. Now he, that was his second year, man. We've got kind of a friendship going, and uh, he flew in. Actually, uh, the first '80s icon uh, was John Purse. Okay, and then we're like, let's let's uh, who's next? Dean Hickey was a natural choice. You helped create so many careers for so many people in the sport of BMX that went on to do big things, like uh, Todd Slavix, that were you know uh, influenced by you as a track operator. Don Jolly, which I heard the whole story about that. That was really cool to to really learn the history of uh, Dallas County Cycle Park. I should mention that Metroplex BMX would probably be called Dallas County Cycle Park if it was located in Dallas. <laughs> so. You know, uh, you know, we are we are just so proud to have this facility here, and uh, but the, the the people of DeSoto, the City Council of DeSoto, and uh, for what they did to help us together, you know, just totally stoked. You know, but I, I'm gonna have to get somebody to help us uh, know what's going on in the background. But I heard the word Elliot McGrath, so um, I need to get uh, Gary Elmore over. If I can find, if Gary Elmore's listening. Make sure, uh, you guys, MetroplexBMOX.org, they're going to have their own uh, radio show coming out here uh, probably next week or so. We're doing a little experiment. We thought we'd let the people on the Internet that couldn't make it out today, whether it be friends, family, uh, get a little taste of what's happening out here at DeSoto and how big it is. So, but, yeah, I'm going back to you guys. Um, you, you know, were you part of the uh, Metroplex BMX happening? Actually, I was. Uh, real, real quick, I'll tell you how it happened. Uh, Dallas County Cycle Park number three was out in Sunnyvale, and... Um, gentleman by the name of Ed Haskins who lives uh, probably I could probably hit a driver and a sandwich to his house from here uh, was involved with the city of DeSoto and he had come to me and said if you can uh, ever come up with the idea to move your track to Grimes Park in DeSoto Texas I will put a roof over that building over that track and I said uh, you're kidding me I said he said no so we, had, we worked on it a little bit uh, 1995, I moved to Dallas County Cycle Park, number four, where we speak right now. And um, Ed went to work. I soon left in 1996 to go back out to the ABA to work with the ABA staff as the East Coast Director. Turned it over to a couple of my family members that were helping the track, Craig and Kathy Bowen, and a board members. And they continued to run the outdoor track. Ed pulled all the strings, uh, did all the leg and what you see right now is because of a name Ed Haskins. But uh, there again, back to Don Jolie. If we'd never met Don, this track would have never been here. Cool. Well, man, I appreciate you stopping my history, man. Without a doubt, Brandon. Anytime. Uh, we appreciate everything you do, and, uh, you know, you, your extreme sports are the best. Yeah, I appreciate it. Dean Hickey, guys, right there. The guy helped put Texas on the map, did some big things. His whole entire family was involved. His father, his mother, man, they made BMX special for a lot of people out there, man. So we want to thank Dean Hickey for stopping by. Also for helping getting the uh, Hall of Fame for Texas going okay, as well. Let's see what's going on. Now, I want to say uh, the A Pros are just on track. Now, I, only thing I caught was that uh, KJ Romero and Elijah Wan just qualified, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, KJ Romero's been tearing it up, but he did get a third yesterday. So we'll see what happens to that. Are they about we, to start here? Yeah, they're about to start. We really need our thing turned around. Now, look, we got the 50-50 girls in the house. Let's get them to come over here real fast. 50-50 girls. This is the USAC Pro. We got a Nesveg and Miranda are going at it right now. Hopefully, people can see on the screen a little bit. Look how close this race is. Now, watch that last turn. Miranda's got the inside, but this is just for qualifying. They're not going to go in there. Pretty much that's what the main's going to look like, Jimmy. Right there. Nice. That was interesting. Miranda definitely had a chance to uh, – girls get on up here to take him a turn. Girls, let's get, get our 50-50. One thing about BMX is the 50-50. People love to win money, okay? Uh -huh. So, Jimmy, if you're not familiar, pretty much at every national on those tracks, you'll have 
50 girls come around. Come on, you guys, let's meet our 50 50 girls. I think that people would appreciate that. Just uh, some of the Sunbury girls in the local. Yeah, nah, say who you are there. Just, just say your name. Hey, Jessica. They can see you. Let's, oh, look, she's selling some tickets. Sit down, Jessica, for a second. <laughs> what do you think about the sport of BMX? You're new to it, right? <laughs> it looks dangerous. <laughs> no, no, it's actually it's safer than football by all means. In fact, this guy right here is not moving. He's the guy that takes care of the problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> Paramedic right there. Yeah, it's just perched yeah. Like, like a little bird. Yeah, so it's, nah, it's tons of safety involved. They got the helmets, they got the pads. Um, like I said, compared to football sports like that, you can't compare it. Those guys are getting hurt all the time. At a big race like that, you'll have, you know, things happen. When you have 200 plus motos, when normal everybody gets up, go home, no problem. Uh, Let's meet the Michigan girl. Hey, Jessica, you having fun out here, though? I am having fun. You know, this is the first, uh, first BMX uh, race that I've been You've to. You've never been around the sport whatsoever? No, not at all. So I'm we just exposed you to the sport of BMX. Absolutely. And now you're going to tell your friends about it, spread the word? I will, yeah. I'm looking forward to coming back. You know, they have a girls' class. You could race. I, I am an athletic. I can never do what girls do. This is impressive. They have a novice class for yeah. beginners. So. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Where you start. <laughs> People Definitely in the same friend. skill level. You, they all are just like you at some point. They got on a bike. I'm sure they uh, had trouble getting over a jump here and there, but uh, it just takes time and practice, okay? Now, these guys here behind you are the top of the heap. Look at all the people gathered around for the big money. You guys have been busy. Switch out, Voxana, real fast. Okay. Let's get her over there. I'll switch out. How does this work, the 50-50? Uh, Pretty much they're, uh, they're going to collect money, and half the money goes to whoever has a winning ticket. Pretty easy. It could be uh, any... Could be hundred bucks. Could be a seven hundred bucks. Mm. Oksana, how you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to be here. <laughs> Should mention you're from Russia, right? The accent. Yeah. Yes, it's all. <laughs> Talk, talking the mic straight on. Oksana, you've been around the sport of BMX quite a bit, though, right? Yes, sir. Now through, this, through Sunbury, you've traveled what to the Grands, ABA Grands, yes. Tulsa? Yes, actually, I'm seeing a lot of people I saw in Tulsa, running into people I know. It's, it's good to see all friends. I bet they enjoy seeing you too, don't I they? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and not because you had the 50 50 tickets going on. You've been at BMX quite a bit. What do you think about the sport? Is it exciting? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. And a lot of um, danger as well, I guess. People yeah. get hurt, but I guess it's a part of the fun. We don't really talk about all that, okay? It doesn't happen that often, okay? <laughs> but, but, uh, Brandon, you are just like really trying to make sure that this comes up as the, as, uh, the safest thing ever. Well, look, not, I mean, like I said, no, watch a through. football game and see how many people yeah. get hurt. Have you seen one person get hurt in the last 30 minutes? No, you haven't. Well, we no, did have a guy so. stop by who uh, had an arm problem from today. It's a competition, so. Yeah. All right, here we go. Turn around, Liz. Now, would you recommend uh, other attractive females such as yourself to come out here to meet guys at an event like this? Is it These are attractive guys. I you said, have, you, have you noticed the guys? Would you recommend oh, yeah. other females show up? Yeah, definitely. If you're guys a girl show. who's into BMX, you'll definitely see a lot of hot guys. Just, just get out here. If you're a good-looking chick out there, come on down the track. Oh yeah. Spread the word. Tell your friends about it. Let's get them involved in the sport as well. Hey, Oksana, Lou, let you get back to the 50/50. Thanks Alrighty, for stopping by. Of course. All right. All right, man. You notice the excitement behind us? Yeah. How much faster it's getting? It is. It gets very quick. And it, they're really smoothly up in, like, you know, you, you can see, like, the, the technique that some of these people are doing. It's unbelievable. Now, one thing you're going to notice the diversity, okay? If you look around, you see these guys, lots of teams out here, okay? Hey, hold on. There's Gary. Can, can you kind of help us know who's on the track? Like, Tat needs to just say who it is. All right. We're going to miss something, okay? All right. You might even want to say who's in the lead in case I can't tell from this with this uh, angle. I guess we really should be looking the other way and perch the high. Egg out there now? All right. Gary Elmore, the track operator right here at uh, Metroplex BMX, runs this facility. Open about probably four or five days a week. Now, they didn't have practice as a kid growing up, but you can practice here, which I think is great. Lighted facility. Rain's never a problem. We had a little bit of light drizzle this morning. That didn't stop us from racing. They, not even close, man. They added an extension on. So the rain needs to get blown in with a strong wind. Doesn't even get on the track at this point. Yeah, we came here uh, earlier this week when they were practicing, and the first thing that I thought was like, oh, I need to get a bike out here. Yeah. Now, you notice the difference between tr practice and racing, though, right, Jimmy? Yeah, definitely. There's a huge difference, okay? All right. Now, what I do like, we talked about the other day on the show, is that they've got all the, the intermediates go back to back to back. It goes 11, 12, 13, 14. Then it goes expert. I like the fact they've done that, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you've got friends racing, you know, it's so you get to sit the two or three motos, to, you know, to see the next guy. Now you get three or four, you know, the experts going in order. You can see the 
He's from the track on Ashley and on the team. Uh -huh. um, just makes it so much easier. Let's see here. 12X is out now. Got 12X coming up. Okay, 12X. I believe that was Dalen Penley right now. So we're still in the semis, correct, Gary? Yeah, yeah. Penley's leading right now? Okay. Let's see if he can get competition with him today. Oh, man. He's got about three bikes right now. Local kid. Got the riding for Vendetta. All right. We got a croupie rider out front. Now, who's that there? Who's that rider for uh, Whittington now. Whittington? Uh, Whittington. Whittington. Now, I think he got a third yesterday, so he's leading this one. Man, look at the lead he's got, too. What do you think about the 50-50 girls, Jimmy? I think it's great. Yeah. I'm sure that they're uh, you know, not having a hard time selling tickets. <laughs> How come everyone looks at them and not us? Yeah. <laughs> We're the guys in the microphone. Typically, people look at you, you know, look at us, not them. Yeah, there we go. Well, not them, but people always look at them. 13 experts on the track right now. Who's in the lead there, Gary? Dodge. Dodge. Oh, the local guy, Dodge Munson. Now, he won this uh, yesterday. Beat money. Oh, uh, that wasn't Dodge, I don't think, anyway, was it? Now, that's... I don't know who went down exactly, but a hyper rider comes across. 13X things just got changed up a lot. He does not look happy. That was Dodge Munson, local guy. Definitely the guy to beat this weekend. Just went down. That opens up for all sorts of happenings in the main there, Jimmy. Wow, he's got to be super disappointed. Now, he also races Cruiser, so I'd hate to be racing him in the Cruiser class. Hey, girls, I'm a, let's go to... Um, I'm going to take a two-second break here. All right, guys, back to the track. We out there, Gary. 14X got an answer rider in the front there, followed by a Redmond. That's got to be Walker Finch and Redmond. I don't know who's on the 14X. That could be Justin Richmond. Yeah, it is Justin Richmond in the lead, but he's got Walker Finch right on him. Like I said, this is just a qualifier. These guys just go one and two. Get in the main. Got a Sunbury rider in the back there. Who's that? Is that Cody Sharp? <laughs> it's going to be Richmond there, Finch, and Taylor, Cody Taylor. <laughs> 14 expert. Now this is the guy from Aruba right there in the lead. Look at this guy. Got the long hair, man. He's flying. He pops up. Riding for Sunbury today, man. Check him out. I think that's a good pickup for the team there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did like the Sunbury girls when we got to meet him earlier, man. When he got his Sunbury counter, he was pretty smiling there. Yeah, there he goes. Now that kid with Finch in there and Richmond. It's going to be interesting. That's, that's quick, man. That's the uh, the main yesterday that it definitely affected some game sheet, okay, and some nag standings. Of course, he's got all year for the nag standings, man. Let's get him over here, actually. Yeah, go get that kid. So when was he um, officially part of the team? When did he? Uh, it's, yeah, as of yesterday, man. As of yesterday? Yeah, he's, he's riding for us today, and... Uh, Definitely need our eyes and ears to carry back over to kind of watch behind and see what's going on. People listening, this is not supposed to be a super professional a broadcast for the play-by-play. -play. We're more or less kind of, we're going to interview the riders, talk about them for a little bit. The Z-Man Zinzo in the front there. All right, we've got Answer in front and Hyper in, the, in second place right there. Oh, man. I don't know if you saw that on the camera, man. That was close. Chris Luna almost getting taken out the finish line right there. And he guarded the little girl that was sitting there. That's why you don't want to be on the track there, Luna. Oh, 
All right, looks like Jordan McMullen riding for Redmond Rock Rockstar is in first place. Hudson, Colin right there. Riding for Krupe, getting the second. Got that mic? All right, now, Jimmy, I am probably the worst case scenario for pronouncing names correctly, okay? Okay. And that's why I didn't want to say it a while ago. Me and my Texas accent. Uh, let's see. Let's get him on. Let's get some headphones on him, man. Let's talk about this. What's going on here? Great first, run, by the way, man. First of all, let's pronounce it correctly so I don't mess it up. Zaitiel. Hold on. You got to talk really close to it. Zaitiel. There you go. Did you get that, Jimmy? Yeah. Zaitien. Yeah. There we go. Let's look in the camera there because you're going to be a big thing in the U.S., man. I mean, what do you think about cruising over here and, and racing in the uh, USA BMX? I think it's good. A good experience. Are you excited for the potential, the opportunities? Yeah. That can come this? Now, are, did you uh, – oh, there goes Malak. Ben Loss riding for S-squared looking good in the lead there. <laughs> would you? How would you compare the competition between Aruba and the States? Uh, a lot faster here. Now, do you have to race like 17-year-olds over there to get challenged? Uh, yeah. Pretty much? Okay. You're, you're a very, very quiet individual, man. <laughs> so, talk to us real quickly. I noticed you came over here with a coach. Yeah. Now, is that something that's uh, that a, a – oh, that's a great way to have some sportsmanship there. Uh, is that something that uh, Ruba helps you out with? Uh, yeah, sometimes. They'll help you out? Okay. And how often do you plan on traveling to the U.S. from now on? Uh, I think I'm going to California. Hold on. Is that Sebesta? Oh, big news right here. Tanner Sebesta, the winner yesterday of the 17-18 Expert, just went down in the first turn. We've got Nez out front who's going to be qualifying. Man, Dodge Munson won, wins yesterday. He's out today. Sebesta's already out. we got 19-27 Expert coming up next, it looks like. Let's, talk, let's go back and talk. Now, you're 14 years old, okay? Yeah. So, what are you in ninth grade? Uh, yeah. Ninth grade, okay. Uh, the Olympics and all the uh, stuff that's going on in the UCI, is that the main reason you're over here training or riding? Uh, yeah. All right, now I'm going to be interrupted to watch the racing a little bit, okay? So okay. Some big stuff's happening there, man. Talk to about, about the main yesterday, okay? Now, when you came out of the gate, you had two competitors you're, you're going against there. Who was that? Was that Finch? Uh, Finch and Justin. Justin Richmond, okay, yeah. the juice. What were your thoughts when you made the second turn, okay, hitting that triple? Uh, I went um, to first, but I didn't expect Walker. So he you, came you, and slipped. You, you caught the lead, you went in, yeah. and uh, you had too much adrenaline going, I think, in that turn, man. I, yeah. It was just going to happen. So you almost down. Uh, Miranda and Posey just qualified. And I had to third and fourth. <laughs> We're on the 19th, 27th this time. Brandon Elmore is in the lead. There's a guy that should uh, double this weekend. He's stretching out the lead. Wow. Looks like Calvin Davis is in second place. Oh, he's battling for second place. And I cannot catch who's in second right there. Calvin Davis moved to third. He's in a qualifying. I wish I could have caught those. Who got that, uh, Gary? Huh? Who's the other guys? I'm not smoking, uh, You're watching your son, weren't you? All right. So going into the turn, though, did you know that was such a risky move that you wanted to just go for it? It was no. first or nothing? No. Yeah. I just went in without a doubt. And it was it. You weren't holding back, though. No. Yeah, it works a lot easier. I can't hear the announcer, but uh, the earphones make this so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Who's in the front? We got Austin Loby in the front. Austin Loby. Oh, that's actually Calvin Davis right there. Apologize while I go and I miscalled that. Let's see as they come across the line here. I'll see this advantage. 
You put their phone in, you're losing their account. I mean, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see when the man figure it all out. Let's just talk. Let's just talk to the mirror here. It's kind of hard to. Uh, we're not doing a good job announcing the races, regardless. So, so basically, you went in the, went in the turn. What, what happened when you landed on that triple? Uh, I went on the inside, and uh, I thought there was no one in the on inside lane. Yeah. I just went there, and when I turned, I saw Walker there. Well, what do you mean you thought there? Did you close your eyes? And just no. <laughs> All right. I, I was all the way inside. So you just popped up and there they were, and boom, yeah. down y'all, all three went. <laughs> all right. Nah, it was a, it was a good move though, man. We were watching, man, and it was a it was a gutsy move. Yeah. All right. Looks like Bo Richards and they have an SC rider out there. When are we gonna see you next, man? When's your next race gonna be? Chula Vista? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Will you go find me? Uh, you said Chula Vista, okay. Now, are you just going to stay in the U.S. to go there, or are you going to be heading back home before? Uh, i I got to be head back home. You're going to head back, back home? Yeah. Because of school? Yeah. All right. You got a girlfriend there? No. Not a girlfriend? What do you think about the U.S.? Uh, pretty hot. Pretty hot? Yeah. Did you see the 50-50 girls a while ago? Uh, I think so. Did you get the, you know that calendar you got earlier? Yeah. Did you realize that one of them's in that? Yeah. All right, you're smiling about that, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> he's right. onto that already. Yeah, he caught on real quick. Don't worry, he's wearing that jersey, dude. Yeah, he appreciate, appreciates that. Let's see here. Couldn't give you free wheels or a frame today, but how about that free calendar? Yeah. All right. Now, how many years? How many years? Uh, seven. Seven years. Okay, so you've been for a while. Uh, at this point, what's like the biggest accomplishment you've had? Uh, 2009 Worlds. 2009 Worlds? Yeah. Did you win it? Yeah. Fifth. Oh, fifth? Okay, but you got to go there, man. That's exciting. Yeah. I got to tell you, man, not a lot of uh, Arubans out there. You're the second guy I've met from Aruba. Oh. And, uh, the last time I had a guy uh, from there was uh, Greg Romero was training a couple years back. Oh, yeah. So, uh, now, is this something where they sought you out and they're like, you're a guy, they look, are you the future of that place, and that's what's going on? Yeah. Okay, so they're scouting you out for the, the 2016 Olympics? Yeah. Is that really what's going on? Yes. Oh, that's awesome, man. Does that mean they pretty much just take care of you and say, uh, make you the golden child? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, uh, let's talk about that, man. What are they doing for you? <laughs> uh, um, they paid almost my, all my UCI trips. Okay, I, they just said something that the summer routines I had to kind of pay attention to what's going on. They pay for your what now? Um, UCI races. Okay, they cover all that. Yeah. Uh, now, do you have plans to go to college one day? Uh, yeah. Are you just going to just be max it? No, uh, finish school and be max. Now, when you get older, you can consider, if you've already thought about moving to the U.S. to uh, train? Yeah. Okay, which happens a lot of times. I guess, where are you going to head to, Texas or California? Uh, California. Oh, what's up on that, dude? <laughs> Chula Vista. <laughs> Chula Vista, huh? Yeah. The OTC, all right. And I got to tell you, they're not going to let you on the track. Oh. You, you didn't know that, did you? No. Huh. They won't let you train, man. Sam Willoughby's not from the U.S. And he's not allowed to get on. He's talking about jumping the fence. So are you willing to jump the fence? <laughs> yeah. Maybe y'all can help each other, man. Like one could be the lookout. Team it, effort. Yeah. And then you can do the little pick him up, you know, grab the two hands together and just throw him over. Yeah. He'll take a couple laps, and he, you'll take a couple laps. Just go back and forth, man. Huh. Well, well makes, do you know Sam Willoughby? Yeah. Okay, y'all pretty good friends? Uh, no. Huh. You're not? No. Well, you are uh, now because you got a mission together. Are you checking out his <laughs> chick or something? You checking out a lease? Yeah. You do? Oh, look at yeah. you missed it, man. <laughs> That's probably why you're not friends, bro. You might want to think about that, man. Okay. At least don't admit to it. <laughs> you know, when he walks by, check her out. I don't know, man. If one of them gets dropped by Redline in the future, they're going to break up anyway. Okay. I can't see that, that couple making it uh, different sponsors, man. Okay. So, <laughs> you, you'll have a chance. Don't worry. You're 14, dude. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, keep riding like you're riding, man. Get the big checks. And you'll have yeah, an, you'll thanks. have your own Elise out there, okay? Yeah. At, in all fairness, she's going to be way too old for you. Okay. By the time you're 18, you want, you think you're going to date her? Nah, she's gone, bro. Okay. <laughs> so you'll have some other little girl walking around. Okay. Let me ask a question, okay? Now, do you play off the whole beat? Because in Aruba, what's some number one sport there uh swimming swimming yeah wow would you have ever guess that jimmy um no probably not first you probably know other than first. michael phelps i can't say i know any other swimmers you yeah know? i'm not i don't see people doing laps at the local pool much either so all right well swimming huh then did you swim you ever consider uh, i'm like for no. comp for oh, no never i don't like it <laughs> no like all right all right, well, listen, man, I want to thank you for stopping by, man. Best of thank luck you. in the main today. Let's make it happen, especially with that jersey on. So, uh, cool. Well, listen, we'll get you Oksana and uh, Jessica over there in a little while, okay? Okay. I was told I have to get a picture of those girls of you today, by the okay. way. All right, man. Good luck to you, man. Thanks. All right, man.
That dude is looking flying fast, man. Yeah. And it's going to be an exciting race with Finch and Richmond and him. That's going to be the – well, with all the people going down, that's that's probably going to be one of the most exciting uh, mains right now, mm-hmm. other than, like, the elite men. A lot of – I mean, Sebesta's out already. Munson's out. You know, I think 14 Expert might be the exciting one to watch. The 1927 Expert, Elmore, home track, man, he's killing it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll keep an eye on what's going on, man. The mains are coming up. We'll try to get the pros on here after the mains are over. I'd really like it if we could get uh, find out what, what pros are in the main. If we could get uh, Elmore, who's being our track helper, or someone over here to give us a rundown who's the top eight today, uh, that'd be nice. Let's go to a quick break. Okay. We'll come back in five minutes. We'll have the mains, and we'll get some interviews going on, okay? Okay, sounds good. Guys, don't go nowhere. We're live at USA BMX. Super Nationals in DeSoto, Texas at the Metroplex BMX. Hopefully you're watching us live on MetroplexBMX.org. Tell your friends about it, man. But the mains are coming up. We'll do some interviews. Probably a little bit different than the uh, standard uh, interview in BMX. They have been so far. Let's get to know these racers, okay? (laughs) All right, man. Five minutes, guys. We'll be back, man. Test one, one, one. Hey, hey.
Test one, one, one. Hey, hey. We're back. We are at the Super Nationals, USA BMX live, and uh, y'all, y'all, I can't on the right. Y'all handle y'all's own thing. Um, basically, we're the 50/50 girls are trying to figure out who won the 50/50. They're counting the money. It's over 500 bucks. Someone's about to win 250. Let's see what's going on. Okay. Oh, we got the A Pro. El Caldwell's back in the lead. Now he won yesterday, but Elijah Wan's in the mix today. Okay. Man, he is flying today. Codwell stretched out his lead. Elijah won in second. I can't see who's in third. And where is KJ Romero, man? There goes KJ. Oh, KJ is like in fifth, sixth today. Fifth place for KJ. Unexpected, man. I really would have put my money on KJ Romero this weekend. Yeah. He's been to this track plenty of times. He's actually stayed in Dallas before when he's around the team. 
and he's been killing it at all the other nationals in the A-Pro. So he's also very good for coming from behind, so you can never count that kid out. But Codwell, back-to-back uh, -back wins yesterday and today, looking good, coming out of Florida. Elijah Juan Davis getting on the podium in the mix, and I, don't see, I didn't see who got third, though. Now, that, does that just say something about, like, uh, how competitive it's getting? Is it ramping up, like, with the uh, competitiveness? Because then you've got a guy like that who you said would be your favorite in that race. And a, in A-Pro, I'm not too familiar with Codwell, but these mm -hmm. guys are fast. They all train hard, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a pro class. It's competitive, period. I mean, mm -hmm. these guys are fast, quick. It's the beginning of the year. Several of these guys will end up being double A pro by the end of the year, but for now, there's are just battling out. Now, they raised the, the money to turn double A pro. I believe it's 4000 now, so they'll stay in that class a little bit longer. I can't hear you. Oh, and you got to be 19, I was told. you got to be 19 years old. Oh, we got pole cam. We got the vet pro now. They're switching up because yesterday, Javier Colombo was in the lead. I can't see who's in third place, but Paul can in the lead, riding for Dan's. Oh, Rusty Dial, local guy, riding for S squared in third place there, looking good. Switching it out today, mixing it up. These guys are going all year long. We'll see who gets the title for Vet Pro. Look at that. Pole camp with a win, riding for Dan's comp. Javier getting the second for SE, and then Rusty Dial for S squared getting the third place. Local guy doing good, man. I guess you could say he was dialed in today, so. All right, guys. Oh, it's a USAC time. Colin Hudson in the lead. Check this kid out, man. He's been flying for the past year. Nothing stop. He's getting faster and faster every time. I see. Riding for factory groupie. Got a red line rider and the two rocks, Redmond rock stars behind him. Oh, that's Hunter Pelham. Riding for JR. I'm sorry, not red line. I just saw the red, white. And black on his red line, that's Hunter Pelton, man, another Texas guy coming in from Austin, Texas, doing good today. Oh, now this is the time. We've got the girl. I don't want to miss this one. Let's see if Valentino can do it back to back. But you got 3D Dominique in the house in the lead piece. This is going to be a good race, Jimmy. Oh, who do we have in the lead there? Is that Lee? Dominic Daniels leads the one that turned. Oh, there she comes, Valentino. I can't see that burn. We're uh, blocked out. At least is in the lead, though. Valentino second. Dominic's coming on fast in the rhythm section. Right now, it's still one, two, and three. At least Daniels are. Valentino, then there you go, man. They mix it up. Dominique. call it wrong. Yeah, at least, at least the post got the win in there. Dominique Daniels. 
No, actually, Valentino got the second, and Don James got the third, right, Jimmy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> No, it's gonna take a while before I'm uh, recognizing everybody's names and everything. But uh, I'm getting torn different directions, man. I'm like, people don't realize I'm trying to focus on the track. I got people behind me saying stuff. Man, I hope we get Lisa over here for the interview. Where's Gary go, man? Let's see if we can get her over here. This is the double A time. Let's see if Sam Willoughby can do it again. The elite. Dominique Daniels at the finish line talking to the officials. There might be something I can see on the finish line there. Oh, I, I understand we get he's coming to see us here. I mean, that's going to be good. Yeah. Well, thanks for going to talk all about BMX. But better from more. But what's going on with this on? Dominique Daniels talking to the official, looks like. And Dallas Team was at the finish line. doing the uh, presentations. They just showed, I believe it was Nick Long. And uh, now we got Schaumburg coming down. Jimmy Lester, a little gold medalist right there in 2008. Riding for factory free agent. And we'll be doing a little coming down right now. All right, for those that are listening right now, I apologize then. I'm trying to give you the race action live. You can see part of it on the camera. 
waiting for Elise at these posts to show up. And there she is right there. So she's probably going to want to watch this race before we start talking. You can come up here and watch. Now, Jimmy, you got to think right now, Elise, uh, I mean, Elise is thinking, we're going to get steak tonight or we're going to Jack in the Box. Let's see what happens here. Sam, the man, is out front. He's leading again, and he's breaking away from the pack, man. Looking good. I cannot see who's in second. Oh, yeah, now if you heard his interview, you'll know that's why he's not hammer and nails of his brother, okay? I'll show you. <laughs> this is unconfirmed, but it looks like Nick Long and, uh, I'm sorry, Wellers and then Nick Long. Yeah. My guy behind the scenes, I think he just called one of those wrong. Alright, we're waiting for the arrival of Lisa B's post, okay? Now this girl is killing it as an amateur. She's killing it obviously as a pro now. Alright, welcome Elise. How you doing? Man, she hasn't even got her breath back yet. Is that from watching your boyfriend race or is that from being on the track? Alright, let's just try to keep it BMX today. Do you mind? Yeah, Alright, because the other day, you realize Sam just went a whole different direction on us. Have you heard about this yet? No. Okay, good, because I don't know what, you're, we, we gotta, we, well, we'll stay off him, okay? <laughs> so tell me, this weekend, okay, how do you feel about the race? You just, I obviously feel great about what just happened, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm so stoked, it's unbelievable right now. Okay, now, huh, I just thought about this, that's two big paychecks going home today. <laughs> How's that feel? That feels even better, doesn't it? His is bigger. His is big. oh, yeah, okay, well, there we go. So basically, now, where do y'all go on a night like tonight? Are y'all going to stay in town or you fly out today? Uh, I'm leaving tonight. Leaving tonight? Hold on. You said you're leaving. Sam staying around? No, nope, we're both leaving. Oh, you're both? Oh, <laughs> man, if he was staying in Dallas, we'd have to take him out to celebrate, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you wouldn't like Sunbury girls taking him out, would you? Oh, uh, they're, they're very pretty. <laughs> no, but would it, would it be okay if we took Sam out? Oh, he can do whatever he wants. That's fine. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. We, we, he, he would fit in our crew. Did you notice that? Uh -huh. How great would Definitely. that be? And you're totally cool with that. I'm good. You're secure. I want to go home. Go to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll send the invite to him. What'd you say? I said we'll send him an invite. Go for it. Maybe he can what change his plans. What about celebrating? Well, yeah, yeah. Why aren't you inviting her out for a celebration? <laughs> yeah, well. What are you implying here? <laughs> no, no. Stay too. <laughs> now, let me ask a question, okay? Where did the nickname The Beast come from? Um, that came when I was like, I think nine. And I was like 60 pounds. And basically nothing rhymed with the least. And the local announcer was like, oh, okay, let's uh, think of something that rhymes with the least. And the Beast kind of did. And it was just kind of stuck because it was so opposite of me. So you didn't take someone out on the track? Uh, no, I just got it. I was just a 60 pound little girl running around. Everyone thought I was real funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I was hoping for a good juicy story behind that, man. I did, I did tell, do you know oh, Joey Bradford? Yeah. His dad, um, when I got on stats and I was like uh, 11, uh -huh. he asked me, why is your nickname The Beast? You're eating like soup, little girl stuff. I'm 11. And I told him, well, just wait and watch me on the track tomorrow. And that was my comeback, so it kind of grew on me, I guess. Hold on, let's see what Gary. <laughs> oh, I got a little more insight on you there. Didn't oh. know, well, actually, I kind of knew what he just told me, but uh, I talked your father before many years ago when you're switching teams around okay but uh, so that's how you get the name Lisa the Beast uh, you, you mentioned about Joey Bradford okay now has he been a big part of your life oh uh, yeah huge he's one of my longest friends and, and great supporter I train with him it's good are you aware that your uh, boyfriend has a man crush on Joey Bradford uh, I'm very aware that Sam has always um, creepily looked up to Joey Bradford yeah <laughs> he can tell you what color gloves he had on any race it's it's very creepy really <laughs> okay well yeah I, I felt uncomfortable when I talked to him about it the other day because I know he's in a relationship with you but it sounds like if the opportunity was to happen you might be gone what would you say if the, if the opportunity arose Sam might switch Sam, over yeah oh you know he was like a giddy schoolgirl talking about Joey Bradford it's, it's really no joke, and if, and if he, his heart really desires that, he can go do that. <laughs> uh, I think I'll gladly find someone who would rather go with he, me than Joey Bradford. No, he was very, <laughs> but he was very passionate about his uh, interest in Joey, though. 
Yeah, very, he's uh, very passionate about everything he does. Okay, well, you need to watch the interview, though. There's some stuff in there you might want to talk to him about. <laughs> okay. Are you aware now, do you feel like, what would you do to help change the sport of BMX to make it better? Um, there's a lot of things we could do. I think there needs to be, you know, make more of a show of it as far as, like, the pro racing and stuff and maybe some night races, all that sort of thing. And then I think that three, ma three mains, like, three final finals are probably the best thing, I okay. think. And when I asked the same question to your boyfriend, you know what he told me? What? He said poles. Poles. In the middle of the track. <laughs> oh, strippers, that would help too. It's some good entertainment. Maybe the Sunbrew girls can get out there today and we can well, try to test They it. don't strip though. That's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, your boyfriend says he wants to put, I said go-go girls in the turn after that, but he wants to put poles. We need, a, we need those monster girls to get out there with the 30 signs and all yeah. that. We need all that stuff going on. <laughs> Are you, you're being sincere, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, well, look at that, man. You got the, uh, <laughs> the support of Elise the Beast. And after that win, maybe you can go talk to the, ABA, or the USA about the yeah. BMX about that. I'll try. I'll see what I can do. Actually, the fact that you're saying that means a lot because women tend to, like, you know, they, they actually not women, the powers above us tend to think we're going to offend women. We, really, we have no desire to do that. I know? mean, you got to go with what sells and what's going to get the sport big, and I don't see that changing anytime soon, so you might as well go with it and try to grow the sport. We were actually telling the 50-50 chicks to bring their hot friends out here. There's lots of guys available, right? 50-50 should be selling it with a deep V-neck. Yeah, well, well they, <laughs> no, just they dress somewhat. <laughs> these, you know, we, keep it, we keep it covered. But um, <laughs> let me ask you a question. We talked about Redline, okay? Now, how many, how many years have you been with Redline? Uh, I've been with them since 2009 now, so this is my fourth year with them. Fourth year. It came across, I mean, we asked Sam about this. Let's just say that Redline one day had to cut their budget, okay? And guess what? One of y'all has to go. Is that going to end y'all's relationship? I mean, I was there first, so. Oh, really? So you would, now what if they came to you and said, Elise, we got to make a decision. You have seniority. What are we going to do? Oh, give him the boot. Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I, <laughs> all right. I'm the Redline girl. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no hesitation yeah. at all. Well, you know, you, you have the good package, I mean, for the sport. I mean, you're kind of an all-American girl <laughs> that's kicking butt on the track. Yeah, so, forget Sam. He's not even from here. Yeah, he's Australian. To get him on some Australian team, you know? See, <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> there's, a, just, there's a guy, Zeta, while ago, is interested in you, by the way. And it sounds like she might be available pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> good news. If there's any budget cuts over at Redline, <laughs> Sam's gone. All right. Uh, I so think I think uh, as long as we both keep doing well, we're both pretty secure. Uh, so. I, I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. By what I saw today, you're not going nowhere. So <laughs> your relationship will stay intact. That's probably good. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Maybe she'd prefer not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so basically, uh, you're, let's talk about y'all's home life, okay? Now y'all live in California, correct? Yep. Right by the track. Yes, yeah, right by the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista. Uh, is it would it be safe to say it's sort of inconsiderate of you to uh, flaunt? the uh, UCI track in front of him that he can't go on to? I mean, he moved there. <laughs> Chase, did, you, did you live there first? Uh, I lived at the training center in the dorms um, since end of 09. I went to college out there and lived in the dorms at Chula Vista. Um, now he's not allowed in the dorms, correct? He's not allowed on site. There. Man, they really don't want that guy anywhere near that place, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize that he's talked about jumping the fence at night? Oh, yeah. He, I mean, he wants me to help him, but I'm, just, I'm not getting in trouble over it. You can oh, go do as you please. Goodness, it's nothing no, to man. do with me. <laughs> um, do you think there will come a time when they'll just, that fence will just come down like the wall in Berlin and they'll let him <laughs> cross it over? Maybe like a well, one-day pass? I mean, he's been there before and trained there before. It just kind of comes in on um, you know camps and whatnot and there has to be a coach there and his coach oh, is whoa, in whoa. Australia. Camps. Are we talking about the junior camps? He sneaks into those? No, 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 so no. There's, there's camps when uh, like foreign riders can come in and their teams come in and have a camp at the center. We have elite camps. There's all different stuff going on down there all the time. Is that when they start using the cheap water, the tap water versus the bottled water? Yep. <laughs> 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 all right. Interesting. Okay. Well, well, this is interesting. It sounds like we, we need to be talking to her more than Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I like her ideas. <laughs> now, do you think there will come a time when they, they, they're like, you know what, Elise? Uh, first of all, let's, let's talk about your chances of making the team, okay? How are they looking right now? Well, if you were to look at the points right now for the Olympics, I don't exist. <laughs> you don't <laughs> exist. I was leading everything um, back in 2010 when I was healthy, and then, you know, last year I had a bit of a, bit of a rough year, uh, two big injuries and without for majority of the season, and, you know, the Olympic points started back in August right after I got my knee injury, and, you know, this is my only, sec only my second race back, and, you know, Chula Vista coming up in two weeks here, that's going to be huge. That's the first uh, Olympic points race for me after I've already missed two, so. Okay, now, I'm, I don't totally understand how the Olympic points work, and obviously you do, so today does not count toward that. No, it's all, uh, anything on a Supercross track for up, so 
super cross track for us. So every World Cup and the World Championships and our national championships. Okay. Hold on. Hey, Jimmy, stay on the track. We're going to keep talking. Let's show you some of the racing, okay, a little bit. Uh, we'll get, And then we'll go back and forth at least. But So now the first one's going to be Chula Vista, okay? Yep. And right now you're saying you don't exist. Your name's not on the board. Nope. Okay. <laughs> now, do you have – can you still qualify? Yes. So there's, uh, there's two spots available for the women right now as long as we stay in the top four countrywide. Okay. And the first one will go to the points leader, who is Ariel Martin right now. Okay. Um, and then the second one is a coach's choice. So oh, so if you swap up, who's the coach now? Uh, James Herrera is the elite national coach, and Mike King's the director. And then there's a whole panel that goes in front of the decision and whatnot. So it's not just them, I guess. Okay. It's a whole committee. So they're going to walk in. They're going to take their – so is, is Martin just so far in the lead that it's going to be hard to – to offer? Uh, it's it's very up in the air. I mean, her and Brooke Crane both did well at the Supercross at the end of the year. They got a first and a second on her home track. That's huge. Okay. But it, it really depends on this year because if they go, I mean, anything like what happened to me could happen to anybody. I don't wish that on anyone, but you never know what's going to happen out there in a sport like this, and, and it's really up in the air. And all I can do is do the best at every race I can and try to be the top American everywhere. And hopefully, you, you can do more than that. You can maybe sweeten up Mike King and them, send them some candy or something, and I, I don't know. That would be good and all, but I, I'd prefer to make it because I'm good, not a suck up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sam is obviously going to make the Australia team, correct? Is uh, it, is well, right now, yeah, he le he's leading everything. Um, I mean, theirs isn't decided till uh, June either, I don't think, but he's pretty good. You realize there's a potential for uh, disaster with you and Sam cohabitating and to help the USA men's team out. I mean, you got to support your own. I mean, who are you supporting, USA or Australia? Be honest. USA. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> seriously. No, I, I always hope the best for Sam, and I want Sam to do the best. Obviously, there's a deep connection there, and I, I always want him to do his best. I know he's great, and he's determined. Um, but, you know, right behind that, I always want my Americans to do well, too. I see them training as well, but I, I definitely think Sam deserves it. You know, there's nothing for sure about Sam and okay, his relationship, but you can always be an American. I can. See? And that can be taken away from but you. But you can never take away that his determination and what he's brought to the sport. I think all sports changed since he came over to the United States. Now, he's awesome. We like, actually, yeah. we're just taking on him. <laughs> we're just taking on him, but he's a good guy. And I've, I've never met him, you know. And I've actually seen you, and I don't know if I've ever met you before. Yeah. But, uh, but I know, obviously, about you. And I've actually uh, first noticed uh, when you got on CMC, you yep. recall that? You I was supposed to be on Sunbrew, I think. Uh, I had an option to be on Sunbrew, uh, too, then. You know what? That was through Mike King. Did you realize that? No idea. <laughs> I forget the connection while I talked to your father, but Mike King was, uh, I believe it was him, but he was over at Avent at the time, Avent Bombshell. Yep. Is that correct? Uh, Will? No, but Mike. but Mike King was there for a little while. I Not that I know of. I mean, Will Rouse ran that team when I was on it. And, no, no, and no. Gary. He was later on after you're gone. He was actually, Mike King got, got involved in the Olympics, uh, Olympics came into play, and uh, he was gone. But he was definitely there for a bit. Oh, I, I, I shows you how much I know. <laughs> uh, okay. it's, a, it's behind the scenes. That's why I was talking to your father, not yeah. you. you know what I, mean? I was 15. Come on. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You, you, you really remember that? Sunbrew? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As yeah, far yeah, as the definitely. team, like the potential to be. Yeah, I mean, I always talk. My parents let me do what I want, make my own decisions, and, um, yeah, I've never been pushed into one thing. I've always been pretty aware of what's going on around me. What what happened then? Why, why did you not choose Sunbrook? Be, well, be real about it. Well, uh, well this is awkward, isn't it? <laughs> real awkward. Um, I feel well, like I asked her to dance. The, thing, the no. thing was, you know, I didn't want to be in competition with the Sunbrook girls all the time. You know? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> and that's a cute answer. But be real, what happened there? We weren't. Uh, what? Uh, honestly, the CMC guy approached me at the Grands the year before. Like, same this time is after CMC. No, we oh. came at you after CMC folded. Or, or formula, one of the two. Probably well, after formula when I went to CMC. That's what, when I first turned pro. I think you ended up going to Redline instead. Or maybe well, it, was, it, no, it was formula, I believe you went to. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I was, I was curious why she didn't choose this. I if, wanted, it was I the red, if it was the Redline year, I think I made the right decision. Yeah, no, no, no absolutely. <laughs> it, it might have been the formula, the formula years, but uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I was just curious what, what their answer was going to be. I know why you wanted uh, to do this interview so badly now. <laughs> Honestly, he just wants to know everything. You, you know want the what? dirty details. I, I forgot about it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I totally forgot about it because she didn't come uh, on board. I don't want to remember that. It was a bad time. Yeah, I, left, I left you hanging. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like rejection, man. I'm, trying to just I'm push playing what you get. Come on, you know? Now, obviously so. <laughs> now, you did the right thing. You were with Redline. I mean, that's obviously the way to go. Uh, they seem to have the guys that last the longest. If you're there for a career and you're pulling your weight, uh, that's what you know, That's what happened. Quick question, okay? Let's talk about Redline team for just a minute, okay? Yep. Uh, who do you got on the team there? Carnes? Yeah, Carnes is the, running the team, leader of the HFS, and we got Sam, Mead, Denzel, Tori on the main uh, American squad. Well, right, let's stop there. 
So you got Denzel and Tori, okay? Yep. And Carnes. Yep. Question in the hand is, Sam, uh, Sam's gone. He uh, gets deported. He's no longer allowed to date you because you're an American. Who you go with? You go with Stein, Tori, or Carnes? I mean, Carnes is a bit old, but he is, the leader of the, he is the leader of the sexy bunch, so I don't know. I don't know. Tori's a great guy. I've known him since I was little, so maybe Tori, I guess? I don't know. Hold on. You forget. What about Stein? Denzel? Denzel? <laughs> Me and Denzel have the same birthday, the same everything. Maybe it's a better match. I don't know who I'd go Once with. Again, maybe I just wouldn't go with anybody. You know, maybe i just ride solo. It wasn't an option. Redline's making you sign the contract based on this. I just think that's well, part of it. Well, then they're a bad company if they make me do that. <laughs> yeah, so, now, Stein's one of my boys. He wrote for Sunbury back in the day when he first Stein he, he is came back awesome. one. Once again, a Sunbury rejection. Stein's got Sunbury roots. So, uh, <laughs> all right. That's okay. So, you said not Tori's who you chose to be? What did you say? Cho uh, Tori or Carnes? I don't, Tor, I, it's don't, Tor. I don't know. You just said Carnes is old. You can't look past well, I mean, that. He, is he doesn't 40, have enough money to be a sugar daddy. <laughs> I he's mean, on he, the road too much. He'd be gone so much. He's you know? like your father figure on the road, isn't he? Yeah, he he basically gives us all life advice. Does every you know? He's he's the team player. You know, he just he takes care of us out there. Now he's he's like your father figure. Have you ever seen your father in a speedo like Carnes wears? I hope not. No. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about your team manager wearing a speedo around all the time? You know, the big thing with Redline is HFS Hot Factory Squad, so we call ourselves. And you know, Jason's. One of the top-notch guys you'll ever see, and he's real fit for a 40-year-old, man. He's keeping it together, so if he wants to run a Speedo, he can run a Speedo, because that's what makes his heart happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let's see. What else is going on in the world of Elise? I mean, aside from, I know you're a gymnast. Do you still do that? Uh, no. I, uh, I retired from gymnastics when I was 18, when I moved up to San Diego. Um, I still try to do it for fun, though. So, okay. And, and so, because of gymnastics, that had to help you in the sport of BMX. Definitely. For a lot of reasons. Like obviously, for crashes, your flexibility, yep. muscle strength. I mean, gymnasts are so strong. Yeah. Um, if you weren't doing BMX right now, where would at least uh, at least post be? Um, I'd probably be in college going for a Division One sport with either gymnastics or I actually was a pole vaulter as well, but I, I enjoy gymnastics, so I'd hopefully be going for a D1 Okay, D1 let's get away from gymnastics. sports. Uh, <laughs> let's say you had to get in the world of business, where would you be? What would you be, an account executive at a bank? Or, I mean, what would you be doing? I'm in a big toss-up with what I want to do here. I either want to be kind of doing what we're doing, and being on TV and broadcasting, maybe down on the NFL field, maybe at so the Super Cross So races. a Sunbury girl? No. No, 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 no. We do the stuff. We, <laughs> she's been on TV. With Sean, she's done Sean Kings and all. She's on TV every month, actually, from okay, Deadline. Okay, then maybe. Maybe that then. Maybe I'll be yeah, Sunbury Once girl. again, a rejection from Sunbury. Hey, man, what is wrong with this girl? At some point, you're going to have to just realize she doesn't keep, want anything to do with it. I'm going to keep Sam <laughs> in town. And <laughs> it's either that or um, I've always been really interested in Field, um, okay. Being maybe a surgeon or something along those lines. I don't know. We'll oh, see. Oh, Sunbury so, Hospital. Go. Sunbury Hospital. So, so <laughs> yeah. Right, so basically, medical field though. That's interesting. Okay. So, have you? Do you have a background or? I did a lot of stuff. I uh, got a lot of college credits, at, like back in high school and my first year of college that I took. I did a lot of science credits, and I love anatomy and learning about the human body. I think it's really amazing. And obviously, through injury and whatnot, I've kind of learned a lot about bodies and how they work. And I think that I could be good at helping people do kind of what I did. And how old are you right now? 21. 21. Just, just turned. All right, legal. She's smiling about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so 21 years old. Where do we see Elise Post in 10 years from now? Uh, either on TV or in a hospital, I guess. Not involved in the sport of BMX? Uh, well, that's, I hope I could do something with the marketing. I've always wanted to do something with the marketing and broadcasting of BMX and make it grow it, uh, to a larger, but that would obviously fall into the uh, marketing and broadcasting category. Okay. Well, cool. Hey, listen, it's been fun talking to you. Yeah. I'm sure this is just a typical interview to you. You do this all it's the time. It's actually been a good one. It's fun. <laughs> all right. Well, we were about fun. Yeah. <laughs> we want to make this sport grow. We want to get to the masses and, you know, add some theatrics to it. I don't. We're going to reject Sam's proposal. I'm pretty sure yeah. that won't go over very well. <laughs> okay. But I really do think the Go-Go's, because they're pretty well covered, that might work. Good. Definitely. I don't know. Some of the moves might be a little provocative. But think about it. Let's just say there's a majority male, male in the yes, sport, um, and they would like that, I think. Well, so I have, when I go to do this and talk to the, ABA, or the USA BMX about this, I got your support. Yep. Wow. Look at that. There we might go. Might make you the spokesmodel. Maybe, Maybe. you'll go talk to them. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> she don't have any calls on the track again, I just, do you? I just got to focus on the track right now. So All right. Maybe well, listen, after. <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you. It was very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.
I you never too. really got a straight answer why you rejected our team offer back in the day, but that's okay. We'll let you slide on that. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Yeah, it's going to stay a mystery. So, <laughs> by the way, there's a 14 year old Aruban, uh, Arubian. How do you say that? Arubian. Arubian. That's interested in you if things don't work out with uh, Sam. And he's going to be a future pro, I can promise you. He's four, right. watch 14 next week. You'll see him well, I only about. go for the number one, right? So yeah. <laughs> hey, now, well, you, you picked right on that. Yeah. Well, listen, I wish you, you guys the best of luck, first of all. Y'all are obviously, you. you do realize y'all are like the. Um, in the world of BMX, you're kind of the power couple right now. You're the it couple. You never really probably heard, thought of that, but you're Brad and Angelina Jolie right now in BMX. <laughs> Let's see, Elise <laughs> and Sam Salise. Uh, Salise. Yeah. Sam and Elise together. There you go. So instead of interesting. Yeah, there you go. Well, listen, th do you feel good about that? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Just don't start. You gonna start adopting kids left and right? No. I don't, I don't need a kid. <laughs> I can barely get around there right now by myself. Now, have you never been compared to those guys before? What would you say? You've never been compared because she's got the dark hair, he's got the blonde hair. I'd like to be her and date Brad Pitt. Oh, Sam would be gone, wouldn't he? <laughs> and I'll there's always, a, there's always a list. list, you know. If these people come along, you're booted. Oh, hold on, stop. You're right. It's a stop. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> Who's on your list? I know the list you're talking about. Well, obviously Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's one. Okay. Matthew McConaughey. Okay. Potentially Zach Efron. Okay. What is he doing nowadays? I don't know, but he just looks good. Okay. Ryan Dungey. I like Ryan Dungey. From, from Jackass? No. Ryan. From oh, Motocross. Motocross. Okay. <laughs> Not Ryan Dunn. <laughs> oh, Ryan Dunn. <laughs> that wouldn't work uh, out too well. But didn't he die, actually? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's uh -huh. gone. I didn't want to be the one to bear bad news. Yeah, bad news. Oh. I didn't do it. Y'all got to do it. Uh, as far as the 50-50 goes, ask Gary Elmore. He's got the ticket wherever he's at. But uh, Ryan Dungey, who else you got on there? Anybody else? I mean, I'm sure there's more, but I'm who would be on, on Who would right be on uh, Sam's list? We know Joey Bradford. Yes, number <laughs> one, Joey Bradford. Okay. Um, Cameron Diaz. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, I know. And I don't bad agree with teacher, that. she looks really old. I know. She's getting there. Did you see that show? Yeah, I just, I'm not a fan. Australians seem to love her. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. just Australia. I was it shocked. is. Ask any Australian. I've met really? one Australian that didn't think she was attractive. It's real wow. weird. And, and I, when I'm down there, she's on TV nonstop. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's weird. There's a, a channel dedicated to Cameron oh Diaz. It all the movies are Cam Diaz movies. That is so <laughs> weird. She really has. I mean, she's starting to age now. Yeah. She's not from Oh, a, you know who? It'd be, uh... Bradley Cooper, he'd be We're, on there. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, look at his smile. Look at the grin on her, dude. I know. You see that? <laughs> yeah. You really like Bradley Cooper, don't He's you? He's real funny. He's real funny. <laughs> yeah. So since the humor and good looks goes for you, right? Yeah. Is Sam funny? Yeah. Is he? He's, you know, I've never met him, and he, I've really never even heard him speak before. And he's, he's really a, a, a cool guy. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. He's interesting. Uh, we asked some questions I know we could get away with on, and I, he might be uptight, you know, and. Uh, I met Mikey Day the first time, and he just didn't say a word. And we actually a Sunbury girl met him at the door. Him and uh, Romero, Greg Romero, yep, yep. and I didn't know how to take him, and it, I just found out he was in shock. He was just shy about it. But yeah, your boyfriend came in here and he just opened up and about y'all's y'all's life and what goes on and the stuff he has problems with you about. And all, yeah, I'm just kidding. But uh, anyway, listen. I'm a real hassle. <laughs> now nah, I, I appreciate you stopping by. It was very fun to talk to you. Yep. And I think the people that end up listening to podcasts on the road are going to learn a little bit more about Elise the Beast Post. I hope so. And that's what it's all about because they know you went on the track. And know yeah, you're, which I'm very happy about. But think about your <laughs> fan base, your Twitter base, and your Facebook. Learn a little about your inside, about your personal life. Yeah, I try to keep the fans involved. I'm always on Twitter and Facebook and, you know, posting videos behind the scenes. So hopefully they're all watching that, too. Cool. So. All right, guys. There it was. Lisa Beast Post right there. Got a win today. Went from third to first. Yesterday got the third, right? Yeah, I wasn't happy. It's okay. You got a little paycheck coming. So. I'm just really happy that I'm coming back from my injury and everything's on the right track. Cool. All right. Well, good luck in Chila. Thank you. Good All right. Take care. All right, guys. Once again, Elise the Beast Post. We need to get Gary and get our next interview. Yeah, I'll see if we can get over here and talk to some winners. Right now, who's on the track? Do we have the intermediates or the, uh, or the oh, we got the cruisers. We got a long way to go, don't we? We're just on cruisers. Wow, can we talk this long? <laughs> huh? Can we talk this long? Uh, they're on cruisers, man. Now, those are the oversized bikes there, Jimmy. 24-inch uh -huh. tires. Uh, these guys can race multiple bikes in multiple classes. They have uh, everything. You have your open classes, which lets you race maybe someone a little bit older you, older or maybe younger. Uh, you have your cruiser class, which is just done by your age pretty much. Now, the cruiser, there's not a novice. It's just you're just a cruiser. If you started yesterday and you bought a big bike, you're racing some guys that are pretty quick out of the yeah. gate. So 
really wouldn't recommend that for an, uh, a new person to the sport, but uh, they are more comfortable to ride. They're a little bit more forgiving. Uh, but the problem is if, you, if you're older and you get a cruiser because it is more comfortable, more forgiving, you might be racing a guy that's been racing for 20 years like Eric Roop. Right. Know, so, or longer. So, But, uh, oh, there's Dodge Munson. Let's see if he's going to make up for it. Oh, he gets a second today. Disappointment with Munson earlier not making his class mains, okay? Mm -hmm. Going down hard in the turn. 14 cruiser. Who do we got here? And I believe that's Justin Juice Richmond in the lead there. Look, Justin caught the guy from the last moto. Justin Richmond styling out for him. All right. I got to tell you, man, there's been a lot of team changes, man, and I can't sound familiar with who's uh, in what jerseys nowadays, you know what I mean? Uh, it makes it kind of difficult the first part of the year, and I'm so busy working on time, I haven't got to follow uh, the last couple of nationals. I was in Guthrie, you know, there in person, but uh, like I said, man, a lot of teams out there, a lot of changes happening. Huge competition. I mean, I couldn't even, I mean, I can guess who the top five would be. I couldn't even tell you who would be number one, though. Yeah. Seslock in the lead there. He's got Quentin Mack on him. It's amazing how competitive some of these guys are because when you know you see the last guy kind of trickle in past the uh, the line, you can tell that they are very aggravated. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, like there's just it's right there in their eyes. But let me tell you something, Jimmy. Right now there's eight guys on the course. Okay, only one's gonna win. So there's seven guys that didn't get with probably what their goal was today. But watch this. So they're not. The majority of these guys are not pouting. They're not. You know, they, they know there's a, they'll live to race another day. Mm -hmm. There's always a tomorrow. So it just makes it you got to push yourself a little harder, train a little harder, and uh, wait for their time. It's definitely frowned upon for the kid that throws his bikes, I promise you, man. <laughs> I mean, not only is it bad if he has a sponsor. I mean, let's talk about my sponsors for a minute for our team. You know, we have the Sunbrew All-Stars, okay? One of our co-title sponsors is All-Star. Now, they have the inflatables over there, so all the stuff for all the little kids. And uh, at the Grands, you'll see the whole setup in the back area for people to play on. It gives you a good time to pass the day uh, after uh, Grands for like 12 hours per day. Oh, now look at this race for first and second. Hojo and McClaskey going at it. These are two Texans here. Oh, G2, whoever's that, who's ever riding that pass and got the second there over McClaskey. Now we're getting to the older guys, Jimmy. All right, we're just going to let you guys watch the racing. You'll see who comes across the line. You might be able to make it out there. We'll take a break, Jimmy, if I get more interviews going on, but let's let yeah. people watch the racing. We won't turn off the screen. Right now. That's 
Sidner goes down in the corner trying to put a move on a national race. Good number eight back on Archibald. The national race Archibald is going to get the win. Green's going to get the second. Wheeler's going to get the first. Marino's going to get the fourth. Sorry about that, Dan. <laughs> 41 to 45 year old kids, and you know who that guy is out front right now. The big daddy here in the group. Big daddy GT Color sitting out front. Big daddy GT Bison is bringing up at this track. Who's going to get the win? Oh, I don't know. Get this on a wall. Cruisers on the track got Ward, Warner, Summers, and Patterson. Pappy Patterson sitting out front. Pippen and Russ Joyner sitting in that two spot. Patterson and Joyner running one and two. Patterson going to get the win. Joyner's going to get the second. Followed up by the 34 by a buckle Ward and Dawson. All right, man. Oh, hey, KJ Romero, come here. Come back in 10 minutes. We want to talk to you. 10 minutes. Come back. Put a shirt on, dude. Show off. We're a male audience. Yeah, don't we? But listen. Show off. Jason Carnes is in the house, guys. Say hello, Jason. Are we on? Hello, hello. We're hello. on, brother. We're live right now. Believe it or not, people, if you want to tell your friends to tune in, they go to metroplexbmx.org. Now, Jason Carnes, you just made a comment. Put your shirt on to KJ Romero. Now, I walked by the Red Line Pits yesterday, and you got nothing on but your shorts. Oh, I have my short shorts on. Yeah, you're out there trying to flex dude, it, dude. The sun was out. You know? sun was out. You're, you're under the Listen, tent. Listen, I saw the Sunbrew girls. I'm just trying to fit in. <laughs> hey, what about that, man? I don't see you all. I'd like to see Red Lines. First of all, I just want to point this out. We're not getting paid by Red Line if people think that's happening, okay? But I'd like to get paid by Red Line. This is the third Red Line interview, okay? We'll get you on the list. <laughs> all right. We'll get yeah. you on the list. Please. We got deep pockets, man. Yeah, yeah apparently so. Man. According to the least, you know, yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. So, Jason Carnes, you're from Texas, brother. You're part of the Sweat Hogs back in the day, right? Yep, yep, yep. Founding member. You have some stories in your past, man, that actually pop up on video. Are you aware of this? I haven't seen them. I'm, I'm going to have I, I deny it until, until I've I, seen them. You had hair. I did. I had like a big, big wig on my head. Yeah. So, Jason Carnes, talk to me. When did you get started in BMX, man? I started racing back in uh, 86, uh, something like that. 14 novice was my class. So okay. 86. That makes me 40 something. 40, 40 something? 40. 40. Okay. All right. And you just never quit or what? 
No, I didn't. I didn't really quit. You know, I had a four-year stretch uh, when I was in the military. I, I joined the army from. Uh, I think I joined about four days after Iraq invaded Kuwait back in 1990. So okay. my timing was perfect. So uh, right after basic training in school, I went straight to the desert for a while, and then spent some time in Germany, where I where I got a chance to race in Belgium and of course around Germany and France, and and came back to the states for my last two years and, and I never really quit but I wasn't able to race a lot you know right you know they don't give you a whole lot of time off in, sure in the military so uh, but I never quit and, and I got out in 94 and and that's when I hit it hard I turned elite or double-a in 95 and it's been going since well and as far as the lifestyle you live it I mean if there's anyone in BMX that lives the BMX lifestyle this is your entire life you I mean, know, twenty four seven. Hey, I don't, I don't know how I ended up here. I never, I never could have dreamt, dreamt it up this good. But yeah, luckily I've been at Redline Bicycles for twelve years, and uh, you know I, I do, I do a lot of racing, but I take care of the team. That's my main priority. Make sure those guys are straight and uh, set up. And you're like a every, soccer mom, bro. <laughs> basically, you're the without, one getting the, the without Kool Aid. The minivan. I got a dually. <laughs> You know, four door crew cab. Don't try thing. to make it cool. You're the soccer mom. Don't try to play it up, man. More or less. But I take care of those guys. That's my that's my biggest priority. I take care of our trailer. I set everything up, get it race ready. You know, so those guys fly in like you know the stars that they are, and and uh, I chaperone. They're all like 19 and 20 years old. Yeah. Now, do, do they respect you as a racer? Oh. I hope so. Sam used to have a poster of me on his wall. That's Joey you know? Bradford. No, you're. If, if it hey, was, it's, he replaced it with Joey Bradford. Well, that could have happened, but I was there at one time. You know, I could say, you know, once upon a time. What were you wearing? I was probably in full uniform. Oh, right? okay. You know? I've seen your Facebook page. Why don't you your uh, your avatar, your picture of you in a speedo? That was. Uh, that's actually a Brazilian cut thing. I was in Rio. Of course it is. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I was just trying to look local. You know? Okay, all right. And they couldn't, uh, I, you know, I've got pasty white legs, but I was doing my best to look like a local, and, you know, I don't want to stand out. So you felt there was a requirement to make you your avatar? Or your profile picture? Listen, that's that's a nice shot. <laughs> my better side. All right. Now, you're in great shape still, okay? And uh, how often do you work out? I, I, I don't work out that much. I, I, I go to the gym probably three times a week, you know, and, and uh, but we have so much. I still train. It's in my blood for BMX, you know, sprints all the time, road bike on the side, a uh, little mountain biking, uh, a little bit of everything. So, you know, once once you live that lifestyle, you know, you don't really, that's, that's what it is, well, you know, it's a lifestyle. So. Being on the road, I mean, do you eat healthy? I do my best. The road is tough. You know, I eat a lot of peanut butter. Yeah, I've got to think on these trips, man. It's I, I don't want. I mean, I want a snack. Beef jerky is a good road trip. Uh, I, a I don't really eat beef jerky because it stinks, but I do like the taste. But it does stink too bad. But it's got a lot of protein, and and I think it's probably good for you. But but uh, no, nah, that's not my snack. Really. Not your snack. I drink a lot of shakes on the road to just get some good calories. That's about protein shakes. Or? Yeah, yeah. You know the old Monster Mass, Muscle Milk, all those. Okay, things, so you you're know. making stuff before you travel, then getting it ready. I make sure I've got a lot of bags to carry down to the truck when I when I leave the house. So I do my best. You know, it's it's tough on the road, but well, where do you live nowadays? We, we make it happen. I'm down in Austin, Texas. Still, still so. in Austin, okay? Yep. So I'm only three hours from here. I seen you down there. Don't yeah, act we, like you weren't up to no good. Down yeah, there. we were you. down there. We were you doing the club thing the last time I yeah, saw you, I think. Yeah, that was a good time. You got a little VIP treatment tonight, didn't hey, and you? Yeah, I appreciate that. Every, I appreciate it every sip. Really? Yeah. They kept just bring, Have you ever had that happen? If I didn't say thank you uh, back then, let me say it now. That now, was a good night. Was that your first taste of the club life in Austin? Where they just kept bringing you free drinks over and over? Yeah, and I haven't had that. You know, I, I haven't had that. They so rolled out the red carpet you. for you. You know, that it said that, VIP. Yeah. That was a good Locked. time. Yeah, that was fun. I was actually, uh, there's a group of being lectures, man. That was fun. They were just bringing out the shots left and right, dude. I mean, that was a fun night, dude. Well, I was drinking seven up, but. Oh, were you? Oh. Man, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. I didn't, hey, listen, I'm sure you're allowed to have a social life. Right, right. But, right. but uh, anyway, yeah, I guess it's BMX. Let's keep it kid friendly. That's it. But, uh, but, we're, but we're not breaking laws, we're over age. Hey, that's it. That, I, didn't, hey, I, I, didn't make the, I didn't make the rules, I just lived by them. <laughs> there you go, man. So, you live in Austin, but you're never there. Do you have? No, uh, I, I probably travel eight months out of the year. Or so, so I'm at home four months. You know, that's a lot of. You know, when I go home, it's I. I just I kind of live the elite lifestyle still. I, I go to the gym in the morning. I do some emails and then chill out for a while and go for a ride in the evening or do some sprints or hang out. You know, so I, I have a pretty good life. I I, I don't have any complaints. No, nah, if, if that's what you like, man, that's great. Now, do you have a girlfriend? Well, I have a, um, I'm working on it. I, I'm working on you it. You got girlfriends. No, no, no. I don't do that. I'm a one lady man, you know? Okay. 
but, but you just not chosen that lady. There's yet. enough for me to go around, but I, I just don't <laughs> play it like that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, no, I, I I'm working on it. All right, well, good for you, man. I hope you settle down and get married one day. I'm sure some lady will be really happy to have you, you know, every the, night. Here's the deal. <laughs> if I can find someone that can put up with me, you know, and my schedule and and my weird sense of humor and and my here's, wrinkles and all here's that the stuff, thing I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get her, lock her down with a contract. I got to tell you, if you were to ever have children, okay, is that something you'd like to have? Would you like a kid? Man, that is, that's, that's a hard one because, uh, you know, when I go home, after a long day or whatever, I'm up. You know, I get home from a road trip. I'm so excited that there's not going to be chaos when I walk in the door. You know, there's nothing but peace and quiet. But you know, I, I see my friends with kids and 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 all the first time things. You know, the first words and the first step and the first pedal on a bike without the training wheels and all those crazy things. And it's just like a 24/7 reality show. I'm sure they they they're not smart enough to figure out they fall for the same tricks over and over again you know it's got to be a good time but man i'm gonna have to figure out where to fit that in you know well talking about reality shows how did the mtv work, work for you i saw you What's on that? that i saw you on the mtv the, oh the mtv show that well you know that that's been three years ago now so that was a long time ago that was a good time i i uh i had a crash right in the middle of that thing that changed my life but outside of that it was fun you know i gotta tell you now that did basically happen when you got hurt in uh, Georgia, right? Yep, yep, that was it. And right a major, on. major disappointment. You broke your wrist. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I, I did a lot of things to it. Hold on, our girl. Does it make you upset that you're sitting here and you're and she's actually getting paid for her autograph? Oksana's getting paid repeatedly for her autograph. No, I'm looking <laughs> at her in those short shorts, and, and she's worth a couple more bucks than I'm worth. Hey, Oksana, if you need change, go to that place right over there. All right, yeah. Now well, the name like Oksana. Come Russian. on, Jason. No one wants Jason's autograph. Yeah. Well, so here's my problem if you were a father. If I was your kid. Please, okay. I'd be the best dad. Dude, you would be embarrassing. You'd be a great dad. But I got a feeling you might do something that if a kid, if you happen to have a kid that might be a little bit shy, he might be like, oh, my dad did it again. No, 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 no. I, I have a feeling that I, you know. You really? know, you know when to say when. I think you know. I'm, I'm. You retire up. the speedo? No, it's uh, you know. I don't know right where it's at in case I need <laughs> it. I don't wear it that often, but I know where it's at. What is, what is it? Cheetah, cheetah print or the one of the famous? No, one? no, the the cheetah one didn't have much of a back to it. But the one from Rio was just the Brazilian colors, you know. Yeah. Hey, Our, I don't, I don't run around in that stuff all the time. It's just a time and place, you know. I like to play dress up every now and then. Let me, let's talk about your team riders, man. Now, we've had Elise on here. We learned about her. We've had Sam. They're like a power couple in the sport. Those two, yeah, they're unbelievable, the things they've accomplished in the sport. As, as their team, are you a team manager, basically? Yep, yep. As their team manager, has it ever, has their personal op ever, and be real about this, ever been interrupted because, you know, as things went wrong? Like, let's say they got in a fight, their uh, Sam stayed out too late. No, no, it. Sam is uh, the most professional guy I know. He doesn't stay out late. He's having an ice bath at 8.30, stretching and things like that. So they don't fight about I don't. They, they argue, you know, like anyone else, but it's not over stuff like that. Those two are professional, but. Um, I'm saying it doesn't carry over to work, though. Doesn't it? No, like no, I tell them, you know, you leave that back in Cali. When you get off the plane, we, we're just here to do business, but. We got a great family of riders, man. Denzel, Stein, and Tori Nyhawk. All the pros that we have on the team, they, we're a great family. We stand behind each other. And, and uh, you know, when something goes wrong, we all kind of rally around the, you know, the one that had a bad day. And, and, and then we cheer on the guys that are winning. Like today, Sam and Elise both won. So, But uh, Tori and, and uh, Denzel both went down in the quarter. So they're hey, here to cheer those guys on. Who's more valuable to Redline, Elise or Sam? Just say it. Well, just say it. You know, don't hold back. Just say it. Hey, you know what? I, I'm just not picking it. favorites, and I, I, Come I don't on, even dude. presume you're, to you're know. You're being a weenie. You're not, not going to say the truth. No, listen. I think uh, uh, this is a male dominant sport. You know, so I have a feeling that Elise, he turns a few more heads, but, uh, but you know, at the same time, uh, everyone so, wants to be like the winner, and and Sam's winning the elite, which is unbelievably hard right now and 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 guys are here from all over the world it's it's crazy to think that when you look on the gate it's those are the best guys on the entire planet at what we do you know this form of racing there's no one better a week in and week out those guys line up with the best on the planet and then to say that we have the guy who comes out on top 
a great deal of the time. That's uh, that's pretty awesome, and I have a feeling that uh, a lot of guys buy red lines because of, of Sam, so he's pretty valuable. You spent a lot more ta- time talking about Sam, so you kind of answered my question. Read between the lines there. No, uh, it's I'm okay, just... man. It's hard, man. Uh, so we'll move on. Uh, Elise, let's talk about her. Do you feel like that she's an attractive female that plays into the fact that y'all ha- why y'all have her on red line? What, what what are you t- now she is the total package i mean you know she is definitely a cute girl she's fit she grew up a gymnast so she's got muscles yeah more muscles than i've got and um she, she's kind of the total package she's a great role model for kids you know she she uh she just comes out here and works hard and and you know she's she's had a couple of really bad injuries she's just coming back from one now this is only her second race back from a major knee and a hamstring injury uh, way last summer, so she's she's only started racing about uh, three weeks ago, and and so this is her second race. And she came away with a third and a first, you know, two podiums and a win. Uh, she's not bad for the company, and she's not she's definitely oh, a good role model for girls. Lucky to have her. I think she's she's a great role well, model. She for knows it. We tell her all the time. Look, there's Sam's check. Twenty one hundred bucks, not bad for oh, six man. laps. They are gonna eat good tonight. We we're discussing uh, where they're gonna eat. Before they actually hit the finish line, whether it be Jack in the back, uh, Jack in the box, or uh, maybe Salt. Uh, we're going to take them out on Red Lines dime, so uh, you know. Oh, do you have a company credit card? Uh, Absolutely, of course you do. Of course I do. I do. I only go 300 miles, and I got to put 125 bucks worth of diesel in that dually. <laughs> so, uh, you know, someone's got to pay. Now let's talk about that credit card. How much uh, leisure stuff goes on there? Oh, zero. Every receipt gets turned in, man. I, I you know, I like my job, so I keep it business on that card but i gotta think if red line's listening right now which they probably aren't but if, uh, i gotta think that it's like a day like today you can justify spend a little bit of cash oh we're gonna have a nice dinner on the but you know they've got an eight o'clock flight so we'll go to the airport you know we'll head that direction and we'll find something good to eat and uncle chuck he's the president chuck hooper of okay. seattle bike supply and so we go hey listen guys this one's on uncle chuck today and i'm sure with the results we had he won't have a problem all right. Now, you've been with Redland for how many years again? Twelve years. Twelve years, okay. You, and you stepped up. I mean, you're, you're definitely a fixture there, okay? You had all sorts of titles in the Vet Pro class. Uh, you do a good job of what you do. Hey, you get to, You get to the races. You take it very serious. I've seen you there very early setting up. You're one of the first people to set up, okay? Uh, the, play, the pits always look great. And I've also noticed that all the guys that used to be pros are still racing like to hang out there. There's something yeah. to be said for that, okay? And for you, you know, you, you're probably an all right guy, you know. But is uh, have you ever done anything? Because I know Jason Carnes a little bit, you know what I mean? I know people that know you. Have you ever done anything where they pulled you into the sides to Jason? You know, I, I think you've calmed down a lot, right? Are you oh, still- maybe a little bit. You know, that just comes with age, you know. Yeah. The, the things that were funny a few years ago, they're, they're not as funny today. And, you know, when you get to a certain age and you do – if you're doing silly things like run, running around in a you know thong and chaps or whatever, how about naked through know, a hotel lobby? Well, listen, that was for money, so I was <laughs> desperate, dude. I was desperate. But can we you know, tell, can we tell that story? Uh, one minute, I was just gonna say, at a certain age, <laughs> things go from being funny to creepy. You know what I mean? And so I kind of I understand that. <laughs> I and don't so care where they go. Creepy. I don't want to be. The, the it's, the it's, it would be funny to you, but to parents and to some younger kids. They don't need to see me running around acting. No, like a we fool. don't want you to do it. I want to hear the story about it. How you need to gas money. Oh, the uh, oh the, the I'm not asking thing. to do that, man. I'm, I want you to put more clothes on, bro. I've got a. Well, I'm about to remove you from my Facebook page. Hey, listen. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was at a moment of. I was. It was a moment of weakness, man. You know, some guys. That they, was. They, they dared you. And that they, was 87, 87 grands, Oklahoma City. Um, I was racing 16 expert. I went up there with we. That might have been the year we had 16 people in a room. You know, we used to do whatever it took to get to the races. And I think we had 16 people piled in our room. Uh, everyone's broke, you know. We're doing what we can, eating peanut butter. And, and I think it was um, was Saturday afternoon. I had like three bucks left to my name. That's for meals and, you know, every, it, that's not going to cut it, you know. And right. there was a little party that night. And some guys put some money together and said, hey, why don't you go out and break dance in the middle of the dance floor to some Bon Jovi or whatever it was. And I think I made $6 on that break dance, you know. And, right. and, and then, you know, someone came up with the great idea, why don't you streak this place? And there was security everywhere, and you know I was so afraid of getting caught. But money started, you know, people started handing I, over much, money. <laughs> I've heard the amount. I think. What's, what, what well, it? it wasn't a lot. I think I ended up with ninety bucks for yeah. the streak. But 
But, uh, you know, when I started seeing 20s come across, I was like, I am in. But, you know, we got thrown out. Of that. that was at a party. We got thrown out because uh, they thought we were dealing, dealing drugs or something. You know, they saw money changing hands, and they threw us out. So we went over to the Sheraton Hotel where everyone hung out back then. I mean, that was the place you hung out in the lobby. <laughs> and um, so we're like, hey, this place is filling up. Why don't you streak this place, you know? And uh, I, I, I'm in. How can I, you know, how can I turn down money at a time like this? So I went upstairs to the room. Uh, we used to get goodie bags, you know. So I took, um, I think I took a trash bag out of the out of the garbage can, or I think there was a bag with a drawstring, and I put it over my head, and I had a bumper sticker from the goodie bag. I put it around my neck, you know, hold the mask on. Had a had an eye hole, whatever. Went down the elevator in uh, shoes and a towel, and uh, my buddy was supposed to be waiting down there with a bike and some clothes. And uh, I got to the bottom. I looked out the elevator. It was packed. Uh, the lobby was packed. Uh, I said, listen, I can't do it. The guy ripped my towel off. My buddy ripped my towel off. What a friend, right? Yeah. I looked down. I, I was in my vans, and that's it. And I had to go, you know? So we pinned it through the lobby. I remember people jumping out of the way. And I remember seeing a few uh, flash bulbs go off, and I would <laughs> love to see a picture of that, but I've never <laughs> seen one. So I run down through the lobby out the door where my buddy was supposed to be with my bike and clothes. He wasn't there. So I got to go. You know, security's coming, and, and uh, I took off into the streets of Oklahoma City naked, you know, <laughs> oh on a cold. Uh, it's Thanksgiving oh. weekend. You know, it's not warm up there. Right. And uh, so I took the bag off my head. I kind of made a diaper out of it, tore another hole in it, you know, put it on like a diaper. And I ran off and hid in the bushes, <laughs> and security guards were coming, you know. And, and I remember my, my friend, a friend of mine, uh, actually the guy who ripped the towel off, he got his dad. They came and found me. Uh, I was hiding in the bushes. And uh, they smuggled me back in, you know, and and that was it. Ninety bucks. I think I made like thirty-five dollars to wear the bag over my helmet the next day in the sixteen expert quarter. I, I think there's video of that. No. Yeah, someone has a picture of that. I have a picture of that actually, and uh, so I ended up making like one twenty-five, one thirty, something on the streak. But you know, hey, that was a ton of money to me back then. No, I, I mean I, by today, that's like almost three hundred bucks, probably. You know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do bad, man. I no, did not, not do bad. All, I didn't get caught, you know. And I got to meet a lot of pros the next day. A lot of the famous guys that came up. That, oh my gosh, you're the streaker guy. And so. Oh well, hold on. There's 20 bucks. Oh, I, I, you're getting I, off. I, I, well, let's let's get on the mic. We'll we'll get up to maybe. Hey, I, listen. Let's get off the property and and I'll run it. I'll run it. I can't do it around here. All right, now we got to get into closing here, but I want to ask you now: if one of your riders did that. And they pulled a car in. I think there'd be trouble. You know, we're pretty corporate over there at Redline, and we like to have a good time, but we got to keep it clean. You know, that's what it's like when you hit the that's, big that's time. That's the horror boys, huh? The horror boys can do that? Yeah, I, I don't keep track of those guys. They, that's that's the bad boy crew with the tattoos, you know? Yeah, it seems like that's what the, you have to have a tattoo to go to join that team. Hey, those guys, but they get the job done. They're, that's a great bunch of guys there as we well. We require the older uh, riders have hot girlfriends. Hey. And we were trying to bring them around. So. Hey, listen, I, it seems... That's going. That's what we do at our run line, you know. Ask, ask Denzel, man. He was on Sunbury when he was a kid, starting out, and uh, ask him about the time he uh, checked out the hot chick that turned around to be a guy. He was like 15 years old. He didn't know any better, you know that's what I mean? A good story. I was there to witness. I'm gonna have to ask him about it. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he was the person taking the tents. We were all spotting the hot girls on that trip, man. Our first one of our first team tricks uh, trips, and uh, yeah, he made the mistake of uh, ch you know checking on the dude when it turned around. It was a guy. Hey, listen. I've been to Thailand, and there are some cute dudes over there, and they look like women. <laughs> they will trick you. Wow. I mean, they didn't trick me, but I'm sure it's happened. All you right. know. Anyway. Hey, man, listen. Was there any part of this uh, interview, because you know it's going to go around, that made you uncomfortable? No, man. I like to talk. We, we, you know, we have to keep it a little PC, but, but uh, I, I, it, it I, seemed like you kind of. I enjoy times. talking, man. I enjoy talking, but sometimes I, you know, like everyone else, I put my foot in my mouth every now and then, but. Nah, we're good, man. We keep it clean. We have a good time. It's, it's all good. No problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Jason Carnes, still racing the Vet Pro class, team manager, basically team everything for Redline. Shit. Probably uh, going to be the marriage counselor one day for Elise and Sam because they're probably not going to go nowhere for a while. Hey, listen, they don't need to listen to me. I'll, I'll, I'll screw it up. Uh, hopefully we never see those two on Cheaters. <laughs> and hopefully we do see Sam on Cheaters. It's not with Joey Bradford. <laughs> There's a man no, crush going on there, but uh, no listen, to, listen to the, I'm sure you're going to end up listening to the interviews of those guys later on. And I should also point out, this has not been a paid sponsorship by Team Redline. <laughs> hey, man, we appreciate any opportunity we get to come out and 
preach the word. You know, we love BMX. We love riding for Redline. We got the best team out there, and uh, we just feel like we make the best product, and we're doing it for the fans, always. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. We're, uh, we're fond of S squared frames, to be honest with you. So. Hey, listen, you look good on it, man. You look good on it. All right, man. Jason Carnes, man, appreciate the time. Hey, thank you. Vet pro, wild man of BMX back in the day. I've heard his stories. They never go away. They'll haunt him for the rest of his life. So, hey, man, enjoy right, what thanks, you're doing, brother. Man. Keep up the good work, man. You guys take, take care. care. Thanks. All right. All right, guys, we're going to go to a break, man. Looks like the expert mains are about to be coming up here shortly. Want to uh, make sure we tap into that, see what's going on, so we can get some more interviews. Man, we're just trying to show you the personal side of BMX, what it's all about. Good to meet you, man. Get to know the riders, man. They do more than ride bikes. They have brains. So, uh. We'll get back to you guys, take a short break, get back here in a little bit. Going into the last turn. 
It's gonna be Rain with the win. John second. Six and 176. That's Nick in third and blocks him in fourth. Alright, here we go. Ten-year-old intermediate. Scott Pentagraph, Bob and Jim rushing. Pesky, beautiful call up, round and shoe. Got the two great shoe out in front. Being challenged by, oh, getting sideways. 217 taking the lead. 217, the call a lot of front shoe in your two. Out of the last turn, coming back at us, looking for the finish line. Coming up fast.
Out of turn number one, second place right of second here. That is the 67, 67, the line is front. Oh, one, four of Blanchburger in the two spot. So it's Gudger coming back this way. Landsberger in two. It'll be Gudger. Landsberger. 155 and 21. Up Pritchard in third and Williams in fourth. 41 and over in the media. Scott Wardy, Anderson Langley, Jones Page, Martini, Moreno, and Lopez. Got the 351, over the first, Robert Perino out in front of the 83, Ronnie Anderson in two. And they're racing for that second spot as it come back this direction. The 351 getting away, not for long, it's going to be Perino with the win. In second, 83 to 37. Anderson in third, and Woody in fourth. Six, your old experts on the front straight away, got Hilo, Cougars, left four. Larkin, Gunderson, Garcia, Ross, and Bay. Got the city of Jesse Hayes in the board. Out of Crawford. J.T. in the board of the Bay. Gunderson in your two spot. The four. Gunderson, one and two. Heading into that last turn. With two years and three, if I see that correct. I got. It'll be J.T. in the board with the win. Five, C, two. So it's the five of Gunnarsson with the win. The four in second. And two of Coyers, third place six seconds. Seven-year-old expert, Gunnarsson, Mazuski, Elsa, Mariah, Elo, Ballard, Graf, and Lopez. Got the 20, and Chase Gunnarsson out in front of the 10. Uh, Ballard in the two spot. It is Chase Gunderson in the front of Logan. Ghost Man Ballard. It's going to be Chase Gunderson with the win. Logan Ghost Man Ballard in second. Nag nine. Up Elo in third. Eight year old expert Anderson, Powell, Wing, Irvin, Walter, Rodell, Gilstrap, and Booker. Five of Amakai meet Green Machine Anderson out in front of Jeff Booker in two. Looking at Rodell in the third as he come back this direction. Race on for the lead. Little lead. Nag five, nag eight, twenty-five. And so it's Anderson with the win. Booker second. Rodell in third and Walter in fourth place. Eight X. Nine-year-old expert, Peluso, Sheldon, Robertson, Hayes, Kelly, Papa John, Repson, and Judd. Got the one. Nag one. Up tie. Jack Kelly is going to be G1 for G. And the G. So the G and Papa John gets the win. Goal one of Robertson, second. Peluso in third. And Sheldon in fourth place in nine X. Okay, our 10-year-old expert from Parker, make a trap. To make us in the bowls, Rice and Davis. I got Grant to Jim Rice was out front. And they still out of front. Grant to Jim Rice gets a win. Make a second. Parker in third in 10X. Here let me go on experts with Foster, Haley, Yeager, Schwinn, White, Pineo, Castro, and Rittenhouse. Thirteen-year-old expert got the bear liner. 
Alright man, can't do that. Alright guys, man, we just saw the main events. I caught most of them. Let's talk about some of the excitement out there. Uh, 14 expert, man. Finch and Zetan go, actually he's in the lead. Zetan, the guy the, from Aruba. I'm uh, probably pronouncing his name wrong. I'm the worst person at pronouncing names, dude. But um, 
They go into the last turn. What happens? Finch goes for the move. They both go down, man. Justin Richmond gets that win today, all right? Uh, let's go over some of the other highlights. Uh, you know, before that, though, man, he was really starting to take, like, a crazy lead. I was like, man, here he goes again. But then Finch came in that last turn. It's never over, you know, until yep. you get to the finish line. Uh, I knew it was going to be competitive, and that's what happened, man. And Richmond just got the door open, you know, right at the last turn. The door opened up for him. He got the win. Uh, another uh, notable race that uh, was shocking was the 19 Expert class today. Local boy Brandon Elmore, home track. A major battle between him and Austin Loby, man. Austin Loby's fast. The guy's quick. Rides for that answer Renner team. And, uh, you know, they swapped it. I think, I don't know what place Austin got yesterday, but a second today for Elmore, man. Like, trying to watch what's going on here at Dan's Comp, man. Mm hmm. Uh, I got to be honest with you, man. I'm watching all those races. I can't remember them all. But we're not set up to do this play by play. We're set up to talk about racing, okay? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the highlights. I know that uh, in the 28 to 35 expert, Bo Richards got the win again. Then the next class up, which has been a 36 to 40 expert, it went to uh, Shan Hatfield, which rides for SE. Also, uh, Chris Ham getting the second for Sunbrew. And then I did not get to see the uh, 41 and over expert class, man. So mm -hmm. and I know you probably don't know the, remember the name, so we'll just. I have to get to that later. Yeah, we did run it all, though. Uh, you know, so hopefully uh, if you were trying to pay attention to that one, you got to see the end of the race. We've so. done the worst, most absolute worst job. Of course, I don't expect you to know this because you're not in the BMX of uh, doing our little play-by-play. -play. It is hard to do, uh -huh. especially when your back's to them, okay? That doesn't help matters. Right. Uh, also, it helped if you had, like, a little sheet about who's actually on the gate and what class we're on. Mm -hmm. uh, but we tried it just for the fun of it. We gave it a go. We're trying to get more on the uh, personal side of these riders, get to know the other riders. It turned into Team Redline today because, let's face it, Elise Post took the win uh, for the women, and Sam got the win for the men. They're going home with two fat checks today, man, so life's going to be good. According to our man Jason Carnes, they are going to have a little celebration on some guy named Chuck who apparently owns Redline. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you go, man. A yeah, great you get weekend. to take home the check and uh, Redline takes you out, so not a bad day. Yeah, well, I'm sure any sponsor out there would love to take these guys out. Guys, that's what it's all about, man. You got the sponsors out here. They're uh, they're helping support the kids. They're helping the sport grow without the help of uh, a team sponsor and uh, all your co-sponsors. This wouldn't exist, man. These guys wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to travel, wouldn't be all over the place doing what they love to do. In fact, I'd like to thank some of my sponsors out there. Uh, you got HRP Plates. You have the, uh, and I had all this written down because we'll definitely we'll skip over somebody by accident, get busy. But it's a lot like one of those speeches you give at the Oscars. It, yeah, you're like, I want to thank this person, that, that person. <laughs> and, uh, Wait a second, I, I I know that there was somebody else on this. Uh, oh, oh, Aunt George. No. Nah, without you. <laughs> let me get some props on me. I'm Sunbury Brandon, man. I want to say some thanks about to these people. First of all, Hanlon University. They do the, uh, they it's handling your business. They got the uh, newest in uh, t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Long sleeves, hoodies, all that kind of good stuff. Speed Zone, man, that's a good place. We, the team, we go there all the time to ride go-karts. They got the mini pupo. Skip over that typically, but they got a lot of the, uh, the newest, latest video games going on. We've got uh, MJT Designs. They help us out of our photos out there. My man Jason Krennic's always on the scene at every national taking shots. Uh, Titan Trading Cards. You'll be, oh, man, Titan Trading Cards. Wait till you see what this is about, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah, in about a month, it's going to pop out. It's going to do some big things. Let's see. What else we got here? Already said uh, GPS for our nutrition, THT for our helmets and our head headgear, Hot Wheels Express, man, my man Larry Munson over there gives some. Uh, basically, when you're when you're at the track, there's nothing better than a local vendor that's out there every week at the local scene, man, supporting uh -huh. the riders. If something goes wrong, something simple like a chain snaps, it's so nice to have someone like Hot Wheels right there that you can go pick up another chain I'd and, imagine, and continue yeah. the night versus having to go home. So uh, I want to thank Hot Wheels. S squared frames, man. They stepped up this year for our team. We're loving it. They're made in the USA, man. That's a great thing, and um, you know we're really pleased with those guys. So uh, we'll, you know, shout out to my man John over there. Uh, and I think, like I said, I already talked about HRP for our place. I talked about most of them, but the one I haven't said yet is All Stars. This team now is called Sun Brew All Stars, and uh, we've actually merged the um, the bike shop team and we never had a trophy team but Sunbrew now has a trophy trophy team thanks to those guys but they are the uh, co-title sponsor of Sunbrew so it's Sunbrew all stars this year check these guys out at Grands when you're bored or you had a kid and you want to get rid of your kid for a little while you let him go there you basically can do all their stuff all day long you get a wristband and it's all those inflatables and you know slides and all sorts of neat stuff man but all-star uh, they've even making uh, they make custom stuff for training where you can run up the hills 
if you have a team logo and you want to put on a big bounce house, these guys can do it, man. So uh, nice. I want to thank uh, Paul and Christy and Jeff for uh, being part of that, man. It's, they've made it a special weekend for us. A lot of our kids are there playing out in the pit area. And uh, like I said, they, they stepped up for us this year, so we're excited about it, man. Very cool. All right. In fact, here comes Jeff along right now of our team sheet. But, uh, guys. 175. All right, guys, uh, let's, we're going to wrap it up, Jimmy. I'm Sunbury Brandon, man. I got my man Jimmy right here. It's been a long weekend. We're at Metroplex BMX. I want to thank those guys for having us out. We're going to start working on their own show weekly. It won't have a little bit of racing in the background. It makes it a lot tougher, man, Yeah. for us uh, amateurs out here, okay? Uh -huh. But, um, Jimmy, what do you think about BMX, win? Hey, this has been a great, uh, you know, experience. It's, you know, my introduction to uh, BMX altogether. I, I used to ride a bike, but I never really thought about the competitive parts of it. Yeah. I had no idea how many different things go into it. Uh, and as you see these guys take uh, some of these turns especially, you can see a lot of technique getting used uh, that I didn't even think uh, I'd be coming out here to see. So I think that a lot of people, uh, you know, if you see it on TV, it's not quite the same experience, you know, or you see videos or something like that. You have to come out here. The energy is like, you know, one of those things. It's, uh, it's uh, very cool, man, very cool. All right, well, I'll tell you what now. I want to tell you one of my highlights of the weekend was the Texas Hall of Fame, man. Mm -hmm. Dean Hickey, all those guys stepping up, Gene Road, and there's several of them. That was really special for uh, the state of Texas, man. I mean, we're it's a national today, but we are. For, I am from Dallas, Fort Worth, and uh, that's something that keeps some dreams alive. Mm -hmm. Man, once again, we're going to sign off, man. I want to thank MetroplexBMX.org for having us out there, man. We'll talk to you later.